All right, welcome everybody to Summer Series Week 11. What's up, guys? What's up? It is that time. You're here, Pro Chess League Summer Series. You know what time it is. It's about to go down, guys. Yeah, this is uh, International Master David Proust. I'm joined once again by James Canty the Third. Yes, sir. James, yes, you got sir. a new hat today, man. I do. I do. It says, that's not a move, so I'm ready to shout that out and everyone else that knows the phrase, that's not a move. We're, yeah. we're, we're gonna we're gonna um, show everyone today so we're excited all right well um is that am i losing my eyesight am i getting old or is that kind of like fuzzily written there that that's not a move it's like one of those are you having trouble reading this drunk shirts <laughs> that's exactly what it is it is like that all right good good to confirm that all right so everybody the first match we've got today is going to be huge it's montreal chess bras against norway gnomes the two largest fan clubs in Division D of the Summer Series. If you don't know where you're at or what's going on, um, this is the Pro Chess Summer Series. That's where the fans can play for their favorite teams. So instead of having four people play for a team, we've got 50 or more sometimes. And uh, you can uh, join either the Norway Gnomes Fan Club or the Montreal Chess Bras Fan Club and then go into live chess and join the tournament. That is right, guys. It's all about you. It's all about the fans. And that means that you guys can make or break a team every week, whether that's uh, fan growth or whether that's just helping win the team or um, actually helping with the points so that you guys can uh, win that club match for that week. So you, it's all about you guys, and we're excited to have you here today and watch some games and watch these, these uh, top-notch teams go at it today. Yeah, last week the match for the Chess Bras was a 10-game comeback where they won by one point the last game going in their favor against Khan. So they won a huge match, 54 and a half to 53 and a half. So if you're a fan of Khan and you didn't play, it's on you. <laughs> That's on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had 300, 300 and um, what is it? 53 fans growth this week, which is uh, a yeah. fourth place for, for them. But of course, uh, they had a lot of, um, uh, I'd say, a lot of uh, publicity from that last, from that last uh, week. So it's good for you guys to, Play for every single team, especially for today, Montreal, the Blizzard, and you got the Gnomes, and you have Candice, uh, the Can Blitz stream today. So um, pick your team and go at it. That's exactly what it's about, and we're going to see everybody play today. You can play for everybody's team. We recommend you do so, and we'll go from there. Nice. So the first thing we've got here for you real quick are the standings. We've got zero points for the Con Blitz stream last week, but I think they're going to pick it up this week. We'll see. We'll see if that's true or not. But um, we got zero points for the Con Blitz stream, despite losing the match by just one point. Uh, we've got the Montreal Chess Bras, who won that match in first place in Group D with five points. They got two points from uh, Eric Hansen in the knockout, three points from the fans in the huge team club match win, followed by the Blizzard at four and the Gnomes at three. Yep, that's right. Now... It's not over. It is nowhere near over. So if no. you are a Blitzstream fan, no matter who, who you're a fan of, you, you never know what could happen. Just like in Group C, the Copa Bears came out of nowhere and just took took the first spot. So you got to be very careful. It's not over yet, but there is a lot of chess left, and that is what is uh, for sure. And you guys can make it for sure as well to help out in these uh, in these uh, these club matches today. Just go over. Make sure you join one of the teams. Get ready to play. Hopefully you did your puzzle rush today so that uh, you're ready to play. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta stretch before you run a sprint, and uh, you gotta do your puzzle rush before you play a rapid game. <laughs> That's right. That's Good true. advice from James. Um, if you didn't do your puzzle rush, well, you got four minutes left. You could kind of do three or four minutes of tactics real quick, then hop on your game. That's right. Um, one thing I gotta warn about the chess bras: they've got five points, and that is exactly the total that the San Francisco Mechanics in Group A started with, the Barcelona Raptors in Group B started with. And the Mumbai Movers in Group C started with. And you see all three of those teams did not make the playoffs, did not make the Summer Series championships. So uh, the Chess Bras are facing what we're calling the Curse of Five. Starting right. out with the lead with exactly five points. And then just not really adding much more for the next two weeks. So on the other hand, one good showing this week. And they'll basically already be into the playoffs, right? If they could score another five points this week, that would be enough. They wouldn't even have yep. to show up next week. That's right. They wouldn't have to show up. They just have Saturday. Time to play. No, we just going to sleep today and let everybody play. And they still take um, it one of the places. So so I think I think that uh, the Chess Bros will be the first team to break that to break that pattern, to break that curse. I think they'll uh, 
they'll score today. But what do you think, James? You think uh, I think the chess bras are uh, they? Hey, they, they're they're relaxed. You know, they got a big fan team right now. You know, the the, the fans are there. It's showing. The numbers are there. They are kind of like just we're walking here. I'm just here to collect. Basically, it's kind of what they're looking like today. But uh, you know, they always can go down. They always can go down. So you never know. You still got to bring your A game here and every other letter of the alphabet. So you make sure you have to be um, um, at your top notch here. At your top notch. So uh, I think that they're they're comfortable, but they're not underestimating anyone. At least they should. So here's James and my predictions for y'all. You see that uh, James is thinking that the chess bras could even score six out of six this week by taking the knockout as well as the club match. They've got a uh, Robin Van Campen, super strong GM from the Netherlands, coming in for them today. We'll see how he. Uh, does in that knockout we'll talk about that more in an hour when this first match is over um i'm going with hammer again in the in the knockout so we'll see if those two 2650 gms clash at some point but uh, we both think the chess bras are the favorites in this first match against the gnomes and so far they've got more fans um registered for that match like you were saying so that's a good sign for them and that then, is correct. I'm actually lo- clicking on it right now. And, yep, looking at that right now, they have uh, more fans in there. It starts in two minutes, ready to go. So they got a strong lineup. I'm looking at the lineup here. It's uh, pretty ba- – actually, the trust bars right now, just based off the lineup, and this is why, guys, fans, you're watching. This is about you right now. Okay, the gnomes may need – they may need, but they may not need. But let's look at the, uh, the, the stats here. There's yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six – players the top six for montreal chess bras are all over 2000 and then we look at uh the right hand side where the uh, north the, the gnomes are actually look at the gnomes team the starting lineup there's only two players including the norway gnomes team uh over 20 over over 2000 so right um which is a uh, saying a lot that could be a lot of points right there just in the first six if uh if they're not able to help that out or fix that that rating gap yep so um, what's at stake? Prizes are at stake. As usual, the uh, first place team just in this group, group Division D is going to be taking home $1,500 next week. Which is pretty good for three weeks of play. Second place gets $1,200. Third place, $850. Fourth place, $600. So you always want to fight for that, for, that last, uh, for that last point, try and get ahead of one of the other teams. And then another super important point, uh, prize that we've got here is the best fan prize, two hundred fifty dollars for the best fan in Group D. Or one weekend, if you uh, if you get active this week and next week, that could be you. Yep, it's all about the fans. Just like we said, we want to reward the fans and two hundred fifty bucks per group. That's awesome, um, of course. So very fun to be able to do that. How can you do that? Is make sure that you play. Of course, you also want to stream your games, just like Art Vega, who we hear this name all the time. But Art Vega has streamed his games. He was been in the post game shows that I was doing. That I was doing. He was everywhere. You could see his name all the time. And of course, he did win 250 for a group. So you can also do the same thing if you're a streamer or if you are into streaming. Stream the games that you are playing um, in the club matches so that you can have a chance at this 250 bucks just for you. And also uh, tweet it if you have Twitter or social media using the hashtag Summer Series, and um, that should help you in that for the price. So have the matches kicked off? They have. The game has go. started. There we Here go. they go. Let's check out the bras and the gnomes. The bras and the gnomes. And here we've got a Rui Lopez. If my memory serves me correctly, when they met in the knockout last week, Jan Luke Big Hammer was on the black side of a Rui Lopez against the chess bras. But last week, chess bras account was uh, the... Number one chess bra, Eric Hansen. And this week, it is Robin Van Campen. Mm. So, same account, new guy. Same account, new guy. That is correct. I actually like this. Uh, are you a Roy Lopez? Oh, you actually played, you, you played everything, Dave. David, so. I play everything. You play everything, right. So. I'm a bit more of a King's Gambit player. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my Rui Lopez is pretty trash. But uh, I do play it sometimes. <laughs> both sides. <Pretty> trash. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, yeah. I've, I've I've been a Roy player really like all of my life, and then I started playing the Scotch Gambit. Oh, so um, the Roy Lo- Roy Lopez is actually honestly is I love it for both sides. I, I do. It's a great it's a great thing. So 
that's the good. opposite of how most people develop. Most people start with something kind of trashy, like some kind of weird gambit. And yeah, then and <laughs> eventually they grow up and they're like, okay, I'll play this mature Rui Lopez with all the Grandmaster games. So much to study. So complicated. Oh, yeah, you know? no, I did it the other way around. So I was you like, did man, it the I'm other way around. It. Right. And now actually, um, I know some Grandmasters that actually exclusively play the Scotch Gambit. So I figured it out and I was trying to play it with them and I found some stuff. I have actually no losses in over tournament play with uh, Scotch Gambit. All so right. I, uh, pretty nice. But here yeah. we go. So looking at this... um. Looking at this game, it's Roy Lopez here. I was very intrigued yeah. by uh, the Bishop G7 versions. I am right. not a big fan, not a, not even a big fan, but just in a Roy Lopez, I never, with the black pieces, I would never finchetto my dark square bishop due right. to how the center looks right now. I am not a big fan of at all of giving up uh, the space. Uh, yeah, you get you get a lot of space in a Roy Lopez, I would see, for right. right? But especially when you when you put a bishop on G7. Luckily, Normally the... Uh, Knows, knows what he's doing though. Normally in the main lines of the Rui Lopez, Black's going to put a knight on f6 to attack e4 early in the opening. Sort of reduce White's options a little bit for taking over the center, put some pressure on the e pawn, play d6 if needed to defend the e5 pawn when White plays d4. Bishop e7, castle, rook e8, and then later Black often plays bishop f8, g6, and puts the bishop on g7 because that could be a good diagonal, eventually that long diagonal. But this g6 line tries to do it just right away, saving time, on that whole maneuver of putting the bishop on the best diagonal. But when you do it in this order, white doesn't need to spend any time on rookie one defending the e pawn. So we notice that, you know, if we pop ahead a bunch to the live position, um, white never had to spend a tempo defending e4. Black couldn't put their knight on f6 because white would have just played e4, e5, just kicking him. So the cost of trying to get this bishop to g7 so quickly is uh, that white kind of rolled in the center a bit. That's right. And and with him rolling in the center, it's always a, a space advantage, which is a huge advantage. Now, I did like the fact that uh, Robin can play F5, which is uh, not very common in the Roy Lopez is what I would see. You, mm -hmm. wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to play F5 and be playing as aggressive as you can with this F5 move to break up that center. And I always tell my students, it's your job to break up a center like this when you don't have one, especially with the space. There are ideas like C6 as well, just to break up the D5 pawn, but F5 could be very strong, but it also leaves a weakness on e6. So maybe he has to yeah. prepare with h6 first. Maybe h6, you're saying, because you don't want to let white play knight g5. Correct. Right? And now he plays bishop to b7. So f5 is yeah. probably, I mean, that's a very daring move if, unless he plays h6. But again, this is a, a def, I'm not a, I'm not, not a big fan of a black's position. Not yeah, this, a big this knight can also come through d4. So even though I would also really want to play f5 to undermine the white center, I... Uh, it's going to be pretty hard, actually, to set it up, I think, for Black. To set up F5, it's like, does there's, like, the moves you want to play, and then there's the moves that you can play, right? And it makes sense to try and set up the moves that you want, but it doesn't always happen. Correct. He's also playing the Hammer Man himself, who knows how to swing and drop the hammer and drop it, just like Thor does. So, yeah. we understand that he's going to bring some very strong uh, play here, just like he did against uh, Hansen and everyone else last week. So queen to d2 is what he plays on the board. I'm assuming bishop h6 is next. Fair or, assumption, yeah. One, he wins the thing, so. What's up, chat? What's going on, guys? Hey, Canty and David, says Balaji. And thanks to Last Samurai, which is JJ, uh, Grandmaster JJ. JJ. Thanks so much, man, for the raid. Hey, yeah. Balaji, how are you, bro? So, um, we got Robin. We got Robin here. Robin Van Campen, 26, 50 feet A. Yeah, he's going to play two two pretty competitive games here against uh, against Hammer, and it could be a preview of the final of the knockout. So, yeah, you know, yeah. be good to see which of them is looking sharpest here at the beginning of the day. There's already one point for the Gnomes, so who takes, who helps with that point? Where is that one? Right here. Nice. Who got first blood? Who was it? It was I, or it might be an L, L Garmadon. L Garmadon uh, is rated 1078 and actually beat a 1400. So nice job. Nice. Garmadon, anything with a Don sounds like a kind of a dinosaur to me. <laughs> so, Okay, here we go. Oh, uh, Montreal gets a point too. They score on nice. Sparky the dog. He's the first. Sparky, Sparky the, the dog. dog. Nice. Chess playing dogs. <laughs> I know they driving cars, not playing chess. Hey, look at this, James. We got a Scotch Gambit for you in Art Vega's game. Oh, uh, where is that? At yeah, Art Vega. 
uh, here we go. Look at that. Scotch Gambit, one of my favorites. They ever. spent several minutes figuring out these moves, but this is like a super theoretical variation. I'm sure you've had this position before with the knight trade on e6. White gets the pawn back. And, uh, you know, then uh, it's a complicated game that ensues. My understanding is theoretically this position is fine for black. It is. It's, it's, it's very fine for black. And actually, there were some errors through the opening, actually, looking oh, yeah? at the game. There were some errors through the opening where you're not supposed to play it. Castle is a way to play it, actually. The the better ways to play is, is actually E5. E5 is the sharpest way, where the, and that's the most theoretical. The castle rookie one lines give black, like you said. They're just fine after ah, this. So E5, D5, bishop B5. That's correct, that's what you're correct. thinking about now. Yep. Oh, and if yeah. 97, you castle, and if 94, knight takes D4, and you, you, you have a clamp on C5, it's very tactical but also theoretical. Right. Cool. All right, so that's the line that Canty's suggesting for anyone out there trying to make the Scotch Gambit still work for them. Um, Art Vega has grabbed the pawn on a2, and Ryan Chung has left his queen kind of stuck there for a moment, so it's going to be pretty dynamic how that plays out there. And uh, Art Vega is streaming his thoughts on his own game over on his channel. Uh, but back to Van Campen <clears throat> with Black here, making a move on the queen side with b4. Hammer still has a move, by the way, after we left that game to go look yeah. at our Vega. And he's still thinking. Not that he can't think here, but he is down two minutes on time. Yeah, Almost. well, B4 was one and a half minute think, think mm -hmm. from Van Campen. So it's a big move. He put a lot of thought into this. And let's see what the repercussions are. I mean, what can Hammer do here? He can't play Bishop A4 tactically because Bishop A4, pawn takes knight, hits the queen as well. And white will lose a piece. Right. So... It looks like he's got to play like knight a4 or knight e2. So knight's got to go somewhere. So what's the big, big think about? Let's say he goes knight a4. Is I think he that's worried? the big thing is the knight a4 line. Because knight e2 is simple. You don't have to think too hard on knight e2 because it yeah. can go to d4 or g3 or something. But the a4 think, which I'm, I'm actually considering it as well because the yeah. b4 pawn is weak. Right. And c5 would be like one of the ways to defend it. But he can't yeah. if you go knight a4. So, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult. So, knight a4, queen b5, and then what, David? What are you thinking? Knight d4 or something? Because that could be something he's thinking. But I don't think black is fine there at all. Like, oh, he plays knight d1. Surprising. Wow. Okay, what knight d1. I mean, the knight. benefit of knight a4 and knight d1 was to cover the b2 pawn with the knight so that the queen Correct. could really threaten to take on b4, which otherwise, if you play knight e2, you're not really threatening queen takes b4 so much. Right. Um... But from here, I guess, his thought is that the knight's going to be really good on c4. It's going to take a little time. But when it gets there, it's going to be really good. Mm, it's going to be yeah, defended. Deep, it's going to be there. hitting d6 so that if you ever move the c pawn for black, you pretty much lose the d6 pawn. And uh, it's going to attack a5. So if black supports yeah. the b4 pawn with pawn a5, the knight's going to be ready for that. Open c file. I mean, that was like... Almost genius. Oh, but now he gets F5 in. So now Still. F5's got to come quickly. I mean, you don't want to wait for the knight to hit C4, I guess, as black. Correct. Got to be dynamic. Really How do you even counter this? Because I mean, D5 is straight up hanging. D5, D5 is, hanging is hanging now. If you do nothing about it. And if you do something about it, if you think, if you do anything, you breathe wrong, you're getting, you're going to lose a pawn. So it's, yeah. uh, let's see what he does. Rook A5. Monstrous. Whoa. See how fast that rook went up there? Yeah, that, that, that animation was sweet. <laughs> it was real fast. Boom. I know where I'm going. <laughs> so he's going to try and hold this d5 pawn. Um, you know, he can't do it with knight e3 because the e4 pawn would hang. If he played knight g5, which it looks like he didn't think about too much, if he played knight g5, pawn takes e4, knight to e6, bishop takes d5 for black, right? Just taking apart that center. Knight takes f8, rook takes f8. And, uh, you know, Hammer's not too pumped about that position. Correct. Up in exchange, but, you know, the knight on b1 is is bad. Black's got two nice center pawns. With b3 pawns hanging, too. It's, uh, it's yeah. not over for black at all. Yeah, so he wasn't too interested in that. Rather try and keep black cramped up for a bit here with rook to a5. Now if fe4, rook e4, and both of Hammer's rooks are on, are on weird positions... But he's kind of got B4 rounded up. He's got his D pawn defended. He can play knight E3 um, once his rook 
has taken on E4 because the E4 pawn's not hanging anymore. Honestly, it is kind of hilarious to have the rooks. Like, it, you have to have coordination in any sport, especially chess. So, yeah. coordination with the pieces is like, um, coordination here is not existing with the rooks. It's very funny, but it's also yeah. very strong because yes, because they're they are dis disconnected doesn't mean that they're not still strong. As we're, they're both very very capable of doing a lot of damage to this position, as you see right now. We got to wonder about c five for black here. I mean, really got to wonder five. about it. There and he go. goes there for it. Go, David. There you go. Yeah. C five was really strong. Oh Cause, my goodness. Because if Hammer doesn't take this. He's, he solves the problem of the b4 pawn. But if Hammer does take it, now his rooks start getting attacked. Ooh, and then, you, you know, the bishop, the knight on f3 is like, uh, you can take that. There's counterplay. Look at Robin trying to swing back at the man when he's getting swung at. That yeah. is nice. Look at that. Rook takes e7 is a move, followed by bishop takes d6. And then maybe go into that. But I'm not a fan of that because of the bishops. And I always tell my students, too, like, when you got bishops, you got to be careful how fast you open up this board. It's like, right. You open up the board quickly. Those and bishops on, are about to be ridiculous. And on rook d8, white will probably lose. Bishop takes queen, rook takes queen, and then, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, the knight, oh, no, the knight yeah, can yeah, cover the, that. Let's right, see. That's what, right, that's so how do you want to do it? Okay, so rook e7. Yeah. He goes for it. Queen e7 coming. That's where it is. He went then for bishop it. Rook d6. Seven. But he's got is. so many things hanging. I mean, black's also got the move queen d8 here. Yep. There's... It's just the bishops. And now he got the bishops, so this is about to get wild. And I think Robin's going to have a great chance at a lot of play. There's... It's not yeah. even a fact as if he's going to have an excellent game because of the bishops. Be even being down upon, it really yeah. doesn't mean nothing sometimes. If it depends on the position, every position is different. But these bishops open up the board so nicely. Look at automatically just the rook it has an open file. The dark square bishop is holding b2. The knight on d1 looks a little weird. And just the line that we looked at with a uh, rook to d8. So you might want to even go rook f to d8. Oh, right. yeah. So queen d8 hitting this yeah. rook. Now if he takes on a5... Bishop takes g7, king takes g7, black stays ahead in exchange. And I'm not sure what white has. I'm not uh, sure what white has there. King takes a5, bishop takes g7, king, king takes d g7. Queen d Yeah, I mean, you only play you need three pieces for that attack. Ah, uh, yeah, queen d4 is good enough. That's what's up. Okay, so he's played something else. But if queen a5, bishop g7, king g7, queen d4 is strong enough because if the king goes to f7 or g8... Oh no! Oh. On Queen C four, he can block on D five too. Right, well, Bishop D five. It's That's just messy, cool. man. It's just and messy. It's also Rook D eight's a move for Black, and it's over. Okay, so Bishop takes F three. Now he can trade the Queens. Now there's back rank made on D one. Gotta be careful. Move. There's pieces hanging everywhere. What a wild position. Yeah. I'd probably take the dark square Bishop just because I want him to have two sets of double pawns. Or do you just take on G two? No, that probably wouldn't make sense. Actually, it doesn't. So, what do you do? There's two pieces hanging. You have to take one of them. Yeah. Take on G7. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Rook takes F8. Keith Onsky, thanks for the raid. Takes Thank F8. You, yeah, and now we have the two sets of double pawns here. Okay. And Black is on the initiative, I would say. Black definitely has the initiative. Rook takes and Bishop D takes B2. Mm -hmm. And then you have Bishop D4. Wow, he offered a draw. 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 He offered a draw in this position. Yeah. Man. That's the GM straight. reality. That's the GM yeah. reality. Went to art school there. It's a draw. It's a straight up draw. All right, balance start from these guys. Here we go. Here we go. Really sharp sequence of tactics leading to a bunch of exchanges. That happens Oops, often in a well-played GM game. We have the same thing here, Roy Roy Lopez now with the D3 line. D3 is more of the uh, Carlson route, I would call it, because Carlson likes to play that. You avoid a lot of the Berlin and the draw stuff so when you play the D3 lines. Yeah. So C3, I am a fan of the D3 lines. C3, and then you can put the bishop back. Oh, knight A3, that's a surprise. Never, ever seen it. Never thought of it ever in my life. That is uh, interesting to say every type of word there. Yeah. That's a Joko thing now, and I think that um, I think that Ben Ben Campen is in his in his prep here because he's got more than ten minutes on the clock right now. Ah, uh, yeah. So, he must he must play this position a whole. Yeah, time. I mean the Berlin defense is no surprise from Hammer. He plays a lot of Berlin defense. He played it last week, so I think Van Campen did a little prep Baruski here. Hmm. 
I believe so. Especially you have to notice psych, uh, psych you know, psychology wise, when you're looking at uh, games and you're seeing people play, um, depending on how, how fast they move, it could be a bluff. But right. most times when you're playing strong players like this, uh, when they move fast out of the opening, they are, they know what they're doing. And as you see, uh, Norway gnomes, um, hammer actually took some time here. Not that he's down on time. I mean, he's down 30 seconds, but he did think he's taking more than usual to think here. Yeah. Some of these lines, which he's kind of not out of book, but maybe he is a slightly uncomfortable. He put one serious thought into that move, um, in response to knight a3 of playing c6 that allows him to preserve his own bishop anytime knight c4 comes. But, uh, you know, we see Robin Robin had a plan. King H1, he wants to play F4. Yeah, I would play F4 here, honestly. Just because I, I am aggressive like that. I love yeah. aggressive. There it is. Yep, aggression. He's going to play it. I, I mean, he played King now, H1. Here, what else? Win. You know, King play H1, King play H1. F4. What else is coming? Right, that's right. That's right. So F4 is my favorite kind of move to make to launch this attack. I feel like I am winning here already. <laughs> <laughs> You got that I'm confidence. Like, I got rook lifts. I got f5, g4. Uh -huh. f5, g4 is a plan. I also have bishop b3 with g4, h4, g5, or even yeah. bishop c2, d4. There's so much that white can do. Black's yeah. plan is really the simplest. Is only We know d5 is coming. We yeah. know he's going to play d5, or he, he needs to be. Yep. There it is. And we prepare for it, e5. Maybe shut down the center and open up our light square bishop with d4, bishop c2. But that knight is looking disgusting on a3. Yeah, d5 definitely um, left him out of play. And both white pieces kind of need the c2 square. It's a little bit of a Fisher Random kind of situation where, yeah. you know, yeah. your pieces are on unusual squares and suddenly they're stepping on each other's toes because mm -hmm. this knight needs to transfer through c2 to e3. That's the only way into the game. And the bishop needs to go to c2 as well. Control this diagonal. Pretty important diagonal here. Well, the most important diagonal. Maybe Black will play bishop f5, and he can play bishop c2, trade the bishop, and bring the knight back that way. Correct. I do see that being a plan. Absolutely. Okay. Score right now is officially 25 to 11. The chess bras right now are... Asserting. Playing. Asserting themselves. Asserting. 14 whole points. Man. Yeah. So this crummy-looking knight on, on h7, he could get to e4 here maybe with knight g5. F5. 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 Aggression. Yeah. He wants to roll everything with g5 too. I mean, that's a nice move. I mean, Hammer is just such a... I think he's a very resourceful, like, mysteri mysterious, mystical player. <laughs> <laughs> because he's so strong, and it's not like he has a... What's his strong suit? Honestly, he's like a hybrid. He's strong at everything, which is like he's not... He doesn't have a strength here or a weakness there. It's very strong to play somebody yeah. like this. And F5 is very strong because it's very resourceful because it's also threatening G5. And it's also like if you if you opposite the knight to F6, and then the knight can swing into E4 and close down the light square diagonal forever. Put the bishop on F5, and I'm good. It's crazy yeah. how he finds these, this this kind of stuff. Well, I think it's a big question whether White wants to trade or not. I think that's that's the, the biggest question that Robin's had so far this game. If he doesn't trade, then the position gets all locked up. And you're asking what's Hammer's strengths or weaknesses. I think of Hammer as being a little bit stronger in that kind of a position, that kind of a locked situation. Um, something a little bit like slower, more strategical, I think he's even better in. Uh, so... You know, I think White, he's an E4 player. He may not be pumped about getting into that kind of a, a maneuver. He may want to trade. I know I'm not. I know I am. I hate getting in positions where it's all locked down. Unless I'm playing with the black pieces and the king's any defense on the king's side and it's locked up, I'm great. Oh, that's great. But, you know, for White, I can't. I, I There's not a position I love that's locked up because I like sacking pieces and mating people with the white pieces all the time. So, uh, I, I'm not trying to lock this up. Honestly, I'm just going to go with ca with capturing. It's not really much to think about in my it's my sense mm -hmm. because of my my style. I have to keep the thing open. So and, after, then, and then I'm just going to apply some pressure. Maybe after knight f6, you'd probably um, play bishop e5 for white is Correct. my thought. Yeah, um, getting into that move. weak square. That's a great move, actually. Bishop e5 because it's also threatening rook f4 and doubling up. Right. So that's really strong. And I think black might play knight to g4 in that position, even oh, though it lets yeah. white play rook f8, king f8. What about bishop c2? 
the strong thing for white or bishop c2 yeah, first without the rook trade. Oh, yeah, without giving the king a way out. Yeah. Oh, uh, but knight f2. Then knight f2, rook f2, rook f2. Check. Queen check. h7, king runs, queen g7. Yeah, I think this is about as good as things could get for white. That that looks yeah. fun. That looks oh, fun. That looks real fun, yeah. All right, he took oh, it. Yeah. He took it. He took it. There we go. We cannot. You got bishops. Yeah, and I always tell like people, well, they both have bishops too, but you, you got to play to the positions that you do have. If you had knights, if I had two knights, I'm absolutely locking it up. Keep it locked. But if I got bishops, you know, I just got to open it. I just yeah. have to. The so, good thing and, about letting it get locked is it would have given him more time to fix the knight on a3 and bishop on a4, right? The more locked a position right. is, the less time matters. Right. If, mm. if he's feeling like it's going to take him a long time to organize those guys, he might want the position locked to do that, but... Yeah, I, I think uh, I think he probably didn't know for sure which he wanted, right? Given how long he thought on that move, it was probably a pretty close call for for Robin. Yeah, he took he took some time and thought there too as well. And also notice how these guys manage the clock. Notice how they manage the clock, guys. It's very important to notice that. And also, you want to notice for yourself too when you're always playing is uh, how do you face against stronger players? You do need to take time, but also you you find that it, when you're playing a stronger player. You usually are down a lot of time. For whatever reason, a lot of times it's psychological when the moves are still there, no matter what the rating is, it's the same moves. But it's uh, it's it's very good to see how they watch the clock here. It's um, They're now even on time, but there's sometimes a two-minute lead, and then they're back even, which is uh, no more than usually a two-minute lead, which yeah. is a lot when you're starting to, um, to get lower oh, on time. Oh, no, queen hang by Ryan Chung. In a game that he was playing so great. No. I'm looking at the time scramble right now. Ouch. Oh, my goodness. Hung the queen, but he only has a few seconds left. 7.9, but it is 10-2, guys. It's He's 10 got two-second increments, so Art second. Vega's going to take it. Yeah, he, got, he might take Yeah, there it is. Queen takes C3. He's fine. He's just gaining time. Every I moment. think Ryan was playing time. such an impressive game, man, because I was going to say, like, a couple moves ago, this queen was still on A1, right? Like, Mm -hmm. that took that pawn and white had meanwhile taken all the pawns on the king side and got like a big advantage in this end game eventually and then just hangs the queen there and that's Yikes. it's really sad when you build something up and then uh it crumbles so quickly yeah one Ouch. blunder in like you know Absolutely. 20 minutes of brilliancy is gone yeah yeah Oof. yeah that's the worst brilliant game you know crushing 2700 yeah. feet a or something and then um just Nope, not today. It was a dream. It was all a dream. Yeah. Might be careful. This knight could be uh deadly. Okay, yeah. He took the right pawn. Uh, he'll, yeah, he took the right He'll be able pawn. to clean that up. Yeah, he's gonna clean it up nicely. All right. So Hammer responded with his own absolutely ridiculous. Oh, he played bishop d seven? Hammer responded with his own two minute think, took on f six with the knight. That's a little surprising to me. I'm not sure what else he was he was thinking he wanted to do, but maybe he was looking pretty far at this line after bishop e five of knight g four, bishop c two. Because he kind of wanted to play that, wanted to play that aggressive knight move somewhere. Instead, he just played bishop d7, simply developing, and uh, here comes that trade on f6, and queen h7 is uh, is coming up. Queen h7 is a monstrous move, and also followed by queen h7, rook takes f6, and then um, well, actually, maybe rook takes f6 first, followed by rook f1. By rook f1, if the queen takes, so you cut him off. Right. Correct. That could Correct. be a big, big threat. Um, so what is? How does Black counter this? What do we do? Bishop c seven. Say he plays Bishop c seven and White plays g three. Oh yikes! Trying to gain that Should tempo. It. Yeah, that might be over because now after Queen g five, you do have the same line. Rook takes f six. Rook f one. Yikes. Okay, that doesn't work. So maybe you have to double up. Doubling but if you up. double up, oh, man, you hang on g7, queen h7, bishop g6, queen takes g7. Yeah. Oh, we have king, he has king e6. Man, this is wild. King Another e6. wild game because this king might end up on Keeping G6. the back rank mate going. So then the rook on f1 probably needs to get off that back rank mate, rook fe1. Although even then, if you take on g7, black still has queen e1, queen e1. rook e1, <laughs> rook f1. So Jeez, this is wild. Oh, man, and Hammer's thinking about all that, of course. He's seeing all of this right now. So he's trying to figure out the best line to play. Because, of course, at this point, this is not, like, the best line to play. It's just saying that White's going to make these moves, um, where Black should try to be playing for maybe some... He's looking for aggression. How can I play... How can I find a good defensive resource, but also still Maybe just not G6, yeah. 
That's exactly what he did. Maybe he just G6. So the defensive resources, you give up this G6 pawn if white trades rooks, right? But then you simplify down to this end game where you've got the bishop pair and yep. the stupid nice knight on a3. Still on a3. You play rook f8 quickly maybe looking at rook f2. And um, it might be hard for white to uh, to counter to to counter it, you know, to a point of establishing an advantage. Correct. So, yeah, maybe he's going to want to play rook f1 first, then bishop f5, and then, yeah, and then a move like queen e3 or something. Queen d2, maybe hit an h6. Queen d2, queen e3, one of those moves, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then keep playing that middle game. Right. Oh, so we got the F out for free, and now he could take the G pawn. And now yeah, I think no, uh is slightly better, huh? I think White's gotta have an edge here. Um now it's an in game. Yeah. But he has bishops. And like yeah, like we were saying, like with the bishops, being down a pawn does not mean you are lost, especially even in a GM game, like where you know the black two, black has two bishops versus one. And right. it's very hard to be able to proceed excuse me, proceed without being able to even create a pass pawn. Like yeah. those bishops are going to eat, the, eat up the pawns. On H, the H and G pawns have no future in a pass pawn ever. So, you know. With, so Hammer's with, just going to hunker down and play some good GM defense here. Yeah, good GM G. He knows he's down a pawn, but like, you know, he's drawn games like this before. So, like, if you've got this position against Hammer, you're going to have to work really hard. H3. Bishop H3 was so strong. Forcing you, of course, you can't go king f1, which you really wouldn't want to go anyway. But it, it's, it restricts the pawn on h2 for a long time. Yeah. Maybe bishop h5 could be an answer at some point. Sort of saying, like, hey, do you want to let me play g4 or not? Because mm, um, then black would have to think about just running back. Yeah, there is nothing else to do, actually. He would have to run back. Or bishop f1. That's a weird move. Bishop f1. Yeah. Black could also play bishop d8 so that you could never play king g1, king f2, g4 because of bishop h4 check. You could sort of keep uh, your bishop yeah. alive. But I don't know if you, even if you can keep white from winning that bishop, I don't know if you would want it sort of stuck. Mm. Yeah, especially with this, just keeping it on h3. And uh, Montre, uh, Robin's trying to figure out a plan here. And as you see, guys, yeah. this is why, yes, knight a3 was a cool move. Like, oh, we saw Grandmaster Robin just played knight a3 out the opening. But as yeah. you see, you know, even as a grandmaster here, the fundamentals are still the same, guys. When you put a knight on the rim, you have to get it back to the center as quick as possible. Or you're going to have problems. In this case, it was not a problem for him. But, you know, small problems become big ones later. And this is at the end. This knight on a3 is still on a3. With the bishops able to uh, swipe the board, he needs to probably go knight c2, knight e3 now, probably. Well, black, is, um, black has his own idea of bishop c1, right? So... Mm -hmm. The idea that I had thought of for for uh, Robin real quick was knight c2, knight e3 to play bishop f5. Then either you trade that bishop and get into a knight versus bishop endgame that you've got a good chance of winning, or you get to play bishop c8 for white. But what, uh, what Hammer showed is his bishop's getting to g5 first, so he's threatening to come after these pawns from behind right away. And uh, that forces knight b1, I guess, to defend the c3 pawn and answer bishop, b, bishop c1 with b3. And hold on to his pawn chain, but that's knight. That knight is not impressive now. That's correct, and I don't think he ever has a future. H five was very good after king e two. You might have bishop g four check, mm -hmm. followed by king f two. And um, I guess we're actually gonna just say, yep, he probably has a check here. He did play bishop. I mean, he did play king e two. So mm -hmm. when this, let's say this ends in a draw, who do you have to win? Win that match. When they when they come down they, and play each other again in the knockout at some point, you yeah, mean? Uh, yeah, when a knockout, when they when they let's say they have two draws again. Yeah, if they have two draws, then you got to favor the person with um, the person with the advantage of the white pieces and the draw in the bullet tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. So I think um, this week that'll be Van Campen, um, is the That's number true. two seed by Fan Growth, and Norway is number right. four seed by Fan Growth. So so then I would say that you were that you were right to favor uh. To favor Van Campen, and I was wrong to favor favor Hammer. If they have a draw there, wow. yeah. So well, far, Van see. Campen's looking really good. I mean, he's putting he some true pressure. Tight. Yeah, he's pushing pushing tight here. He's playing playing pretty good. But you know, I mean, Hammer's playing well too. So basically, I mean, I think they're both in great form today, and you know, it would be uh, you know, the knockout match is only one game and one bullet tiebreaker, so it could really go either way 
and uh, hard to know which of them's better at one minute plus one second because that's kind of its own beast. Um, so definitely anything could happen in that knockout. Well, it's uh, it's getting closer to regular blitz time control here, or yeah. actually faster blitz, which is three minutes. Or now it's about a three-two game, three minutes with two-second increment. Very common for grandmasters to play this. And it's uh, let's see what happens. Two bishops versus a knight and a bishop. But the problem here is white is very, very passive. Very, very passive. He's not able, as you see, the bishops are slicing the board here as the king can't go anywhere, anywhere besides where he's shuffling back and forth. Yeah. And I think this is going to end in a draw soon. The knight and hasn't been able to establish itself yet. But, you know, knight f3 to e5, is that an opportunity finally to get the knight out somewhere? Oh, he wants to play bishop f two he's keeping his bishop where it controls the white king because white always needs one piece to worry about bishop c1 you know it used to be the knight the knight got out but now that means it's the king's job you know there's always somebody who's passive but mm -hmm. maybe he's going to want to try and play bishop d3 to follow up this knight then get control of the c2 square which could be an improvement for his king or his bishop i think he's still got i think he's still putting pressure he's he still is. putting he's pressure on hammer game. here robin, robin is trying to win this game he is like, yeah, let's go. Bishop maybe, D3. And maybe also he could also come to... from G4. So maybe he's got maybe he's got two different ways. Four. Yeah, I saw Bishop G4. To do mm. this. I was crushed in an accelerated dragon. Guy sacrificed a piece. Insane, says Fonzo. Curry. Not an accelerated dragon, but a Grand Prix. Oh, yeah, Grand Prix is an awesome opening. Absolutely. I used to Speaking of Prix. which, we've got an insane sack that I want to check out for a moment, James. It's over on board two, I think, between um, Anthony Atanasov and Chess Player 2093. I'm checking that out. And Chess Player 2093 won the first game between these guys, and then and that was with black. So then he's got white in this Sicilian here. And around move 15, this bishop on f3 doesn't look Holy properly sack, aggressive. Sack. But he comes out with the sack here. Bishop takes e5 first, then sacks his knight on b5. a b5, queen b5, knight d7. And then just like throws the rook at it too, oh, man. Oh my goodness! He just threw the whole sink at the man. I mean, yeah. he's throwing everything at him. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, rook d8. Did you see that move? Yeah. Rook d8. Rook check. So bishop a6. Now he's got to play a there double check here with the rook to get something right. out of it. Right. Other rook d1. Queen takes e5. Rook d7. And that's where we're at. White's got three pawns on the queen side against the rook. Now, obviously, it's hard to beat a rook with just a couple pawns. But it's good to keep that in mind because basically three pawns means if white somehow won an exchange, then things would be back to equal, right? They would have three pawns against the bishop in the end game. So white's not down White's not down everything. It's It seems like a rook for no pieces, but three pawns is something. He's trying to set up. Look at this next setup. If he goes king e7, then you have e5 hitting a bishop. And then also queen d6 followed by bishop to c6 is mate. In a way, so he needs to be very, very careful. Also, and potentially the worse would be bishop d6 e5, right? Might be even worse. Oh, dropping, right. dropping Yikes. the piece as well. Yikes. But we'll see. I mean, he's got to do something, and nothing's yeah, that appetizing. And actually, you know what? You might be right. Bishop d6 actually might be slightly better because it connects. It connects a little bit and gives right. us a chance to run. You lose the piece, but you got to get the rook out, and that's why I said it's important to count those three pawns because if Black has to sack this bishop, you know, e5, and then maybe queen oh, b8, yeah. then he's yeah. going to be ha then White's, you know, he's got to count how many pawns does White have? How's this kind of end game going to go with the knight and all those pawns against my rook? Man, amazing game. So this game is pretty pretty intense. I mean, not I mean our our GM game is exciting too, but that game is a different that was different kind of exciting. And like throwing stuff and oh my goodness, did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm impressed. I mean, if the king comes to e8, then there's e5 and bishop c6. And there's no simple answer for black here. Yeah. He Run for the queen e7. side. Did we all miss this move? Like for some reason it looks like it's just okay. Yeah, this move doesn't doesn't seem to lose anything immediately, so definitely I mean, a very e5, viable move right. here. You have to follow Black. up with e5. There's really nothing else to do here. You have to. I mean, maybe you could check on c3 and try it, but e5 mm -hmm. is the easiest. Yep, and he plays e5. And then what's, what's the follow up? I'm assuming queen b8. Queen b8 that probably right. to cover a7. a7 you don't really yeah, want to let the white a7. queen in there. And then the follow up is what? What do you do afterwards? Queen c3. You got to be aggressive. Knight c6 is actually hitting the the queen 
and hopefully be right. able to go queen d8 if he moves the queen off of the, the back rank. Yeah, okay, queen b8's played. Now, now, honestly, white might even be able to play a move like h3 or b4 here, something quiet, because it, which seems stupid, but it's like, what's black doing? What's black doing? Oh, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. The rook you know? is, currently he is down a piece. Currently it, black is not down a piece, it's actually even. Until the rook gets out. Until the rook gets out. And on bishop e7, there's always knight c6 to worry about. So, right. Yikes. So not not clear. So he goes for this, queen c3. This move actually looks really strong now because of king b6, then queen b3. If king a7, knight c6. King c7. If king a5, queen b8. So he could go back king c7 trying to draw. Um, he could also try bishop to b5. But then white's going to play knight c6, hitting the queen. And after the queen moves, play c4. And I think white would come out ahead there. Jeez, crushing. <laughs> so Man. he might have to repeat here, like king b6, queen b3, king c7. I don't know. I'm going to check back on our GMs for a second, see what's happening. It's actually 12 seconds for the Norway gnomes actually here. He got 12 seconds left. Man, it's a crazy game right now. Right. So that A pawn has been surrounded. Okay. C3 is hanging. He's got some work to do. No knight takes E5, oh, I man. guess. Oh, man. Knight C6. Oh. That's a piece. But he got the oh piece God. here. Yeah. He has jumped off the deep end here in the Montreal chess bras. Oh, man. Van Kampen did it, man. What a game. Dang. Wow. He slowly fought his way out of that thing and beat the bishop pair. Man, that's hard to do. I mean, hard to do, guys. B4. Right, so this A pawn, right, once he chased that bishop back, he attacks that pawn on A4, and black can't play B5 because C6 is hanging, so it happens at an awkward moment. He throws the pawn forward. Now, you could take it, but it's really hard to win an endgame with doubled rook pawns that aren't even past pawns. So B4, <laughs> that makes sense. And then the plan is just move that king over to go after that pawn. And hammer... Didn't come up with enough. Bishop a6, the knight has to move, sure. But I guess the key the key point was that if he took on e5, he wasn't drawing this endgame. Yep. G pawn's defended. King can't really get at the e5 pawn easily. If king f4, e6, and that pawn becomes a big problem. And, uh, yeah, otherwise, otherwise white picks up the a3 pawn. He's got two extra pass pawns, and Wow. Tough, tough, tough. And Chess Bros take that one. They also take the match as well. I think, is that all the games? There's actually a few games left. Oh, no. I mean, this this game is just thrilling. I think Chess Player's taking it. So after King B6, he didn't even go for Queen B3, King C7, Queen C3. He plays Knight C6 first, hits the Queen. And she felt like she had to go somewhere, but she blocked the, the King in on C7 herself, and then C4. Just oh cleans him up. And now White's just crushing. And look at that. The black bishop and rook have never moved. Still, still there. back there. Still back Queen there. Queen b6. Hey, oh, oh, and pawn c6 even sets up mate. Right. And he mate sees it all. Chess. chess player 2093. Pushing tight. What's your rating, this big fella? He's oh, strong. Oh, man. Rating rapid. He's a master. He just 20 crossed 2200 with this 2 0 today. I've, I mean, wow. he played for the San Francisco Mechanics back in Division A. Mm. Um, and. Actually, uh, in one of his games too. at the time he was about 2080 2090 kind of like his name but wow. um he's gradually gotten better at this time control i guess over the over the summer mm. you know just by playing a bunch of 10 minute games that game was was sick man i mean back in pieces throwing pieces at him literally throwing them at him yeah and immediately from just, night b5 to then just throwing the rook at him we got to wonder go. what would have happened on rook takes d7, rook d1, bishop c8, right? Because that would have been another way for black to hunker down and defend himself. But he oh. went for bishop a6, thinking it would finish things off. Rook d8 was the surprise response. Yeah. And he just he just gave that rook, not even for anything more. Well, I guess for the pawn on e5. <laughs> Trades everything off. Opens up the bishop on f3 finally. And knight c6 was sweet as well. And now it's over. This queen and needed to go over. somewhere other than c7, but I don't know if she had anything good. I mean, Ooh, queen a5 is just so strong. If like queen a5 is about to be out, queen e8, then queen a5, king b7. Uh, king b7. What's the follow up? Knight, knight b4. Move? 
Oh, night before lights out. Yeah, night you don't even have to think about the next moves. Yeah, <laughs> the winning night attack before. still seems to keep coming through. Holy moly! Woo, strong stuff. Yeah, that was crazy. There should be. Is that that's the match? Man, if yeah. there were if there were like a best game, that would go to uh, that would go to that game there. Yeah. If we had a best game prize, I think. I mean, well, we haven't seen the other hundred games, but uh, actually playing another game right now. There are a few one, two, maybe three, four games left. Yeah, this club we got match. Art Vegas still playing, but um, you know, while we were just focused in on those chess games, just just watching the pawns and and not watching the forest for the pawns, the chess bras just decisively won this club match, seventy two to twenty six right now. Yep, this is the highest besides the Wizards that is 79 and a half. That is still unheard of. Yeah. Unheard of. So they're they're close. It was 72. Of course, they just blew it through the water here. But 79 and a half by the Wizards still unbeatable. Yeah. It's going to be the second highest tally so far in a pro chess league match. So the chess bras really turn it up today. 73-26 winning by almost 50 points. Yeah. Now, how's, uh, how's Art Vega doing here in this game? He's got the extra exchange, but that d4 pawn is pretty strong. But if rook d8, if he can just trade that rook on d5, then the d4 pawn won't be so strong. So let's see. D6 is hanging. Yeah. Ah, I think he just had rook to c5, which was threatening mate. Oh, would have been the way to get out of this? Rook c5. Just thread mate on the back rank and then move. Because I think this might be losing. Yeah, rook takes d6, yeah. and that's it. Yep, he did his puzzle rush today. So, Rook takes d6, big fella, and that could be out. That could be out. Oh, Wait, Knight takes d3. Is this hanging? Just that was just a, that was just a blunder, there. man. He's sitting there. Wow. On knight e5, the answer is just to take with your bishop. Check. Dang. He just dropped the rook. Oh, no, he's he was planning here. to play rook e5 like you, can't he? Threatening the back rank mate. And then oh, on king f1, he can play bishop yeah. c5. And yeah. so he keeps the game complicated. Here, I think black's winning now. Good job, Ryan. Yeah, now I mean I think it should be yeah. over, right? I mean that you have to take on d five to keep them pawns doubled, center pawns. Oh well, yeah, because clear. Is if the a... rook if the rook moves away from the trade, then this rook is pushing that d pawn down the board, right? So, okay, so he took on d five, but now basically this knight's coming into his queen side. He's got two pass d pawns to deal with. It should be a winning end game for Black. I thought the same. I thought the same. All right. Tile prize for that one says William from uh, William William of Orange says winning the tile prize for that one. Oh yeah, he can definitely get a tile prize for that. That last game. I want to sack the a pawn to move the d pawn. It's a big question. If you play a six, bishop a seven, and the d pawn drops, I I like my d pawn. So I'm thinking knight b two, sacking the a pawn, and then bishop a seven d three. Oh, that's strong. How do you even stop the pawn? You have to come back to e three. Right. Knight and we takes, play knight c four for black. Takes. Bishop e3, knight c4, king and d1. King, king f1. f1 would be forced, right? It has to, you have to go king f1, yeah. And then... And I think he might be okay after king f1. Knight e3, might have to start walking to king f3, king f6, king d1, king e5, king d2, king e4. I'm sure black yeah, wins that king it. upon ending, so... Oh, man, That would be decisive. So knight b2 is fine. Oh, okay. wait, that was a nice little check, though. He takes knight this b2, instead. He came back and checked him instead. Ouch. Dang, that was sweet. Bishops are so powerful. If you guys see, as quick as that just yeah. happened, he's like, oh, man, he's like, Low. and then the bishop just came back. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Check. Take this. I'm away. It was now more accurate the the board. More accurate to move the knight to d1 instead of c4 so the black could play knight c3 and yeah, just go after uh, this a2 gobble, pawn. Gobble, gobble. F3 is good. Kick the king. Keep the king out of here. Yeah. He's too close. Right. Well, now this is going to be a pretty tough end game. It's gonna be a pretty tough end game. Materials all equal. The bishop's pretty good. I think uh, I think White's troubles are done. I think Art Vega has escaped again. <laughs> so Ryan Chung, he's like he's like he's like the creative genius who's got this great idea for the game, but then he can't quite finish off the end games. Yeah, that's what we're seeing today. I mean, some really really fantastic play from him against somebody almost 200 points higher than him with a ton of pro chess league summer series experience. That's right. He's playing really. Um, here. but he's not i don't why well, he's, he's still got time to somehow crank out this end game and, and change what i'm saying but at the moment 
not not closing it out like he should. Jigga says big Jigga not says big fella did his puzzles. That's right, man. Absolutely. We always do the puzzle rest. In games are hard, says William of Orange. In games are hard. If you study them a lot, though, they become very easy and you want to study them more. So I recommend study your in games. Oh, the chess three. chat is in chat. He's the one who was uh he must be Anthony Atanasov. He was the one in this uh big game with chess player, and he's saying that indeed when the rook first came to d7, if he hadn't missed rook d8 and gone for this knockout with bishop a6, if he just takes back on d7, white's attack is not sound, right? He can play rook d7, rook d1, and bishop c8, like I was thinking. Oh, Hunker yeah. down Actually, to defend that piece. I think you piece. were right. On rook d1, bishop c8, I couldn't see a way out for white to do anything. Yeah. Nothing I strong enough. That bishop is still stuck on f3. If that bishop could yep. come to like a4 or b5 right. or somewhere, then, Correct. then white could probably win this one. Yep. Um, but on F3, it would still be a tough game, though, I want to say. It would still be a tough yeah. game, because White's got three pawns, like we said, and Black hasn't finished that development. Mm -hmm. So I think I think in a practical that. game, it's not, like, over or anything, but but certainly a computer is going to favor Black. That's correct. I wonder what heavily D there. says on that, too. Maybe, yeah, how do you trade? You got to trade. Queen A6 probably H is a start. Three. H3. You don't really want to give up past rook pawn when you're the knight knights really struggle with that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. otherwise bishop takes h4 was coming so he had to do something that's a good move he has to start probably bringing his king in you might have to just oh. argue, go for it here yeah that bishop is like telling that knight like you are going to suffer you are not going to deal with this age oh, you're going to sack on h4 is, is or, or nothing bully. he's a big bully right now but the good thing is that he's keeping stuff on the whites on the light squares of course yeah. d2 has to be almost played king c2 also with this, king. also with this pawn on a three, oh, which which can't queen on a eight, right? Anytime white plays h four, he could just take it with his knight and get a draw. Yep, that's that's no problem at all. Whoa, you made a slow down, but he knew actually it. it's always a draw no matter what. Yeah, he knew it. No he's matter just, what, just going back to a eight. Yeah, and he about to just sit here. And yeah, shuffle. he's about to pull out a paper and a drink and say, "Come on, <laughs> I I can sit here as long as you want, but maybe you want to offer me a draw." Hey everyone, good morning. Good morning to you, Ahmad. Like chess, how are you, man? Yeah, and this is a draw, guys. Theoretical draw, meaning this is a book draw. So, why is this a draw? Oh, he's up a bishop and a pawn. Why can't I queen it? Because he has the wrong color bishop. And if you notice that ahead of time, you can always get this kind of an endgame and be able to be okay. In a sense, this is one of the most frustrating positions in chess, like in terms of theory, right? Not something that you like blunder, but something that just is that way, that you can be up a bishop and a pawn. You can be up a bishop and five pawns on that one diagonal. I mean, on that one row. <laughs> okay. It would be even more frustrating if you had a5, a4, a3, right? But that you can have that much material and not be able to win, like, that's one of the most frustrating things in chess, I think, um, yeah. to get that kind of advantage and not be able to win it. Um, my feeling, James, is that today, if I understood this correctly, we're not taking any breaks. We're just going boom, 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 chess, chess, chess. Okay. Um, because we got the grand chess tour coming up after us. Um, you know, with some little known names, not not Art Vega or Ryan Chung or anything, but we got you know some little known names like uh, I don't know, Wesley So or oh, yeah, he just started Maxime. playing last week. I remember. Yeah, just just some guys like that. We're yeah. going to be playing in a couple hours. So we're just going to go boom straight into the knockout. I think we're not going to take a break here. Right into it. Right into it. Poggers the Jedi. What's up, Hentacle? Yeah. Good morning. Uptime. Yep, we've been here 59 minutes so far. Wesley, so who's that guy? Yeah, I heard of him, right? We heard of him. Yeah. Fabi, Tundra Mike, MBL, some beginner. Yeah, you know, he's all right. So nice job for the Chess Bros winning the match today, 74 and a half to 27 and a half. Crushing things today. Straight up crushing it. Pretty good. When does a uh, knockout battle starts? When? Uh, let me actually follow these guys. Cool. Yeah, so uh, the knockout. I guess we should. Uh, I guess we should go over to. Uh, 
I guess we should go over to uh, the the pairings for the knockout, right? That's that's what people are going to want to see now. Mm-hmm. See who's who's playing who today. And uh, we got a couple newcomers, so some big question marks that we're going to be seeing playing today. We've got Sebastian Joie for Khan, international master. Haven't seen him yet. And Renato Terry. He's an IM, but he's over 2,500 feet, eh? So pretty close to being a GM. And uh, he'll be playing for the uh, Blizzard today. Uh, right. All right. And then you have yeah. the heavy hitters. You got Hammer and you yeah. got Robin. So favorite to win both matches, of course, Robin and Hammer. So the, the, the big match there will be uh, Robin and Hammer to face each other, which I pick Robin to, to edge that one out. Yeah, I'm also picking the GMs to go through to the final. I picked Hammer in advance to to win it again, but um, I mean Van Campen just beat him one and a half, one half, looking super impressive in that first match today. So mm-hmm. that could bode Hammer's ill. Not happy about that. And you know what I do? I know what I do as a player if I lose a match and I'm like I got time to look at it. Yeah. I analyze that game for the next however 20, 30 minutes. Oh, I got 40 minutes. Cool. I'll, I'm gonna lock myself in this room. I'll be back. So. You know. So you put in the work right away, right, right away. away. Because you, for me, I, I like even I, I saw Nakamura interview. He was like, uh, "You have to get over the losses quickly, short term memory loss with that kind of stuff." But mm-hmm. also, it's very hard to do that. So you you need to know what you did wrong, and you feel better as a release. Is like, okay, I feel better losing that game because I know what to do next time, and that's how I learned. So and that's how everyone should learn, right? But it's uh, learn from your losses. So I think I know Hammer is gonna probably have something prepared. For this round now like you know what you're not going to do this to me twice yeah yeah i mean they probably only have like you know a 10 20 minute break but that's i mean for a professional like that that's enough that's enough to do something um yeah. anyone confused about the seedings here since obviously hammer's not the fourth highest rated of these players the seeding is based on how many fans joined their club this week so that means the norway gnomes they had the biggest fan club but this week they had the least new fans join them just in this week. So um, that puts Hammer at this disadvantage where every round he's going to play this 15-minute game with black instead of with white. And then when they get to the 1-1 tie break, he's going to play white, but his opponent's going to have the uh, the draw odds where a draw in the bullet game would win for them. So that's um, that's also going to be a pretty big disadvantage for Hammer. I, I picked him partly because I've been waiting for somebody other than um, other than VAR to try and replicate VAR's feat of winning all three knockouts in one division. Yeah. And I just want to see that, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm the kind of guy where, you know, the Bulls win, like, three championships in a row, and I'm like, win three more. Win three more, right. Win three yeah. more. You know, I just – I. I love I love it when the champion just like has a huge streak and just keeps yeah. winning. You know, I'm like Carlson, yeah, six tournaments remain. in a row. Let's make it twelve. Yeah, I know, right? You know, I was uh, I always think about that how long Lasker was world champion, and I was like, man, I'm 27 years old. So like, you know, back, living in that day, just thinking about he was my entire life, he was the world champion, right? So that's uh that's pretty pretty strong to see, and I wonder if we're ever going to see that again here. Yeah. Madness. So, um, yeah, so, so that's why I picked hammer, you know, I mean, also just like he got it done last week, you know, and I usually pick, you know, I sort of pick the people who won last week to win this week until they prove me wrong. Most of the time, unless I feel like they just got lucky or cheated or something, then I'll be like, uh, 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 not going to work two weeks in a row. But, uh, yeah, so, so I picked hammer, but obviously he's got, he's got his work cut out for him trying to do it with black. Uh, the thing that really helped VAR, not to take away anything from what he did, but just, you know, we got to analyze this stuff. I mean, VAR had white every single game in Division A. Every week he was the top seed. Every week St. Louis had the most fan growth. Every game he played, he had white. He went to some tie breaks, and then he always had draw odds in the bullet tie break. So, you know, without that, it's not it's not so clear that he could have just won every single knockout. So I, I, it'd be hard for Hammer to follow that act. But I'd like yeah, to see him try. Uh, yeah, and actually, uh, I think I'm not sure who's a better bullet player. Honestly, I don't know if it's 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 Hammer or Robin. Honestly, I don't know. I have never been, you know, in that uh, I've never seen them play. I've seen Hammer play more, so I know. But based off of what happened here, I also know 
Um, I've seen Robin play a little bit of Bullet. I think in the Speed Chess Championships, I mm -hmm. think that's what I saw him play. But yeah. that was not maybe Speed Chess or something like that. I saw him play a long time ago, but not sure what's going to happen here. I'm even why I, I want to see the wild card. Let's say Renato wins because you right. said he's 25 feet a, which yeah. is you know uh, Robin's 26 feet a, yeah, 26 80 feet a. So he's still much stronger, much higher actually, much higher rated. But that doesn't you know stop him from being a, a monster like 2500 feet as an international master yeah him, so we really don't know what to expect from renato terry and sebastian joie as as you guys can see from this stat here terry was never called up for active duty in the 2019 season for the blizzard <laughs> he was on their roster but nothing <laughs> on the reserves nothing done and sebastian joie he played one match scored two out of four against the gnomes for you know a 2498 performance nice. rating that's fine but it's just one match really hard to know what we're going to get from him here right um, and that's good that's good because if they're wild cards i remember playing i beat a uh, international master martin del campo and i played in an invitational in charlotte and uh i never played him before but also my c3 sicilian is like my secret weapon against everything so i have a special line in there that he just didn't know and of course being prepped and him not being prepped, I think I was up 50 minutes on time by both 12, something like that. So it was uh, pretty tough, but it was uh, no understanding. Like, he didn't know this stuff, and we never played before. I don't know the style. He doesn't know my style. So it, I can see something like this very well being a thing, especially in the shorter time controls. Surprises could happen. It's all up in the air. We do favor the GMs here, but I am curious to see what these guys do. They can shake it up very nicely in the mix-up. Yeah. And um, also... Just a quick update on the standings. As you all can see, Montreal Chessbras Chess scored another three points by winning that match. Van Campen looks like he's in good shape, man. If I mean, if he wins this first, if he wins his first knockout here against Renato Terry, that will put the Chessbras to two points at least, because you know, first second place, it's either three points or two points in the knockout. And basically, they'd already be talking about clinching a playoff spot. You know, once they, you know, if they could get to ten points or so, that's been enough in every other group. And uh, that would that would break the curse of five right off the bat. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, and they're trying to do yeah. that, as I see here. Uh, they are closing in on a spot. I mean, it's a huge lead between first and second right now in Group D. Huge lead. So four points is a big swing. You have to win the yeah. club match next week uh, just to just to be able to um, to be close, which is seven points. It's still not even eight. So yeah, you do have um, some work to do. Yeah, Chess the Bros. maximum you can score in a week is six points total, right? If you're if you're uh, if your pro chess rep wins the knockout and your your fans win the the team battle, most you can get is six. So it's hard to hard to recover that much ground if they get up to ten. We'll see. Um, did and the uh, I think they did they win both matches to get them to ten or twelve. I can't remember. Sorry, what's that? Capo Bears did something like that, didn't they? Didn't they win both? Yeah, matches? they won the knockout and the match to score six right. points. Score six and put them in right the week. There. Yeah, that's crazy. It could easily happen like that. Yeah, it's easy, easy swing. It's only been done a couple times. I mean, you would think like, well, I mean, you've got a fifty percent chance to win your team match, and then you know every you know there's always got to be somebody who wins the knockout, right? So you would think, how often does the player who wins the knockout does their team win? The match you'd think it'd be 50 50 it'd happen every other week but actually we've only had as far as i know three teams ever get that six points so it's happening like one out of three weeks instead of one out of two weeks mm -hmm. and uh pittsburgh did it once i imagine i imagine you enjoyed that week pittsburgh's absolutely. done it once absolutely and uh Verruge and Akobian in st louis did it one one time yeah he won Akobian. all three knockouts but his team only won one fan club match yeah Man, but they gave him white his fans gave him white they may not have taken care of business in every single match but they gave him white every week and then he yeah. said that's enough guys that's enough yeah that's good stuff that'll do that all right so here we go knockout's gonna get underway here we got sebastian joie on the official con blitzstream account here he's got that advantage of the white pieces in a 15 minute game against jan ludwig hammer See if he can make that count. I'm curious to see, you know, who Sebastian Joie and Renato Terry are. Follow. I'm going to follow the Norway Gnomes as well. And uh, Robin Van Campen's playing white E4 against Renato Terry. French defense should not be 
should not be an unwelcome opening for Robin Van Campen. I'm sure he's quite happy to see the French defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Most GMs are these days pretty happy to play the white side of the French defense. Yeah. Never had problems with the French. Not to say that it's like it's uh, I just crushed the opening. Honestly, I hate to see the French as in like uh, it's going to be positional and it's tactics aren't as strong, but I always have an attack. I always have an attack. So I'm, I'm comfortable, but. The French is, uh, I think it's pretty solid. But like you said, it's just you're okay with seeing it. You'd rather see maybe something easier or like not not as uh, closed up if you're that kind of player. For me, I'm a, a tactical position, t- tactical player. So yeah, this is like very positional and locked up a lot of times. I like what Robin's doing with the early queen g4 and knight f3. That's he's sweet. coming straight away with a very very complicated variation. I mean, there were simpler options after bishop e7. You know, white can just play knight g to f3. Um, you know, pawn to c3, bishop d3, stuff like that. But he goes immediately for e5, the point of which is to play queen g4, hit g7, just do something awkward to black, even though white's not going to be able to support his center on d4 as well in this line. So very aggressive way to play it. Um, If black takes on d4, then sometimes white won't even take back, right? They'll just leave the black pawn on d4 and maneuver for a kingside attack. Seeing this position here, I haven't seen it that many times. I'm wondering about the move knight b4 for black with the threat of c4 and going after c2. Yes, knight b4 is a move. Knight b4 is a, a strong move, actually. What do you even do, knight h3? Curious about it. Yeah. Well, the point so, is, uh, if white plays knight h3, I want to play c4 for black. Oh, yikes. And right? you're in trouble. You might have to play a3. It's the only move. You're going to lose a lot of material there. So, so if black plays knight before, I mean, does white almost have to play like a3 or something and force him to trade on d3? Yeah, I'm thinking so, because there, there's no right way around away. that. And the queen can't defend d3 right now either. So what else do you do? King e2? That's not a move. It just doesn't work. That's like he fails <laughs> to c4. So like what else? <laughs> hey, James, is a very nice move. you should do a shtick where you just point at your hat instead of saying it. You know, <laughs> once, <laughs> once, once you got that, you just be like, King d2. <laughs> right here. I did that on the stream last night, actually. I was streaming last night. Yeah. <laughs> I just pointed to the hat. <laughs> you just pointed to the hat. Like, uh uh-uh, uh, man. Oh, man. That's funny. Why did they start early for the fan section for Norway? Says, I don't think they did. Oh, oh, why was it an hour earlier than like the, the much earlier schedule had been? Yes. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's because of the St. Louis uh, Grand Chess Tour Rapid and Blitz, which is which is coming up. So the schedule had been moved up for everybody an hour. Yeah. That is correct. Keith That's... Oski said all the guys who enjoy playing the French surely haven't played me playing LOL. Nice. <laughs> Funny. You know what? I say that about York Meyer too. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I love seeing the French, but playing against York Meyer, York Meyer got stuff in books. Like, oh, yeah, this is the York Meyer variation. I'm like, dang. Yeah, you know, but I played him in the French. Actually, I did. I played him in the Arena Kings and got a position where I actually, after I went through the engine, I of course I lost the game, but mm-hmm. I I was winning at one point, so it felt good. You know, I was like, oh, French, I never really had problems with. But. So if the engine had played the game for you, you could have beat him. I could have beat him. I yeah. could have beat him. You know, like <laughs> man, oh my goodness, right? But no, it was uh, it was a like, very complicated. I made it tactical. I made it like in my realm. I love tactics. Uh-huh. Pretty nice. I just uh, couldn't figure it out figure it out so and this york meyer is a beast with the french so he plays played that man so well renato think. terry had a really long think about this situation say, he was in the tank spent really forever tank. on that now he's coming with c4 so on bishop e2 i think he's probably planning to play knight b4 and then bishop we're going to see bishop to d1 and uh i think i think uh van campen is going to be pretty fine here let me check out the other before, opening man, night before was the move like i don't know why he didn't consider it or what he was afraid of i think night yeah. before was just the move like yeah. nothing else really works because now this bishop on d1 is perfect i play a3 and you're in trouble yeah he spent three minutes on that and i don't know exactly what his plan was but i'm going to click over and check the other opening and we'll come back to them we just had a queen trade already in a weird variation i don't know what sebastian is doing here let's see h4 um when i play h4 james it's cool and aggressive and interesting when other people play h4 in random positions like this and i'm just observing i'm like what is wrong with this idiot like (laughs) the center the center bro (laughs) you know so maybe i should look at my own games and then stop doing it that's funny that's funny but i love h4 myself but i do find myself like uh it depends on what's going on because i'm not trying to play it in, in every game and i think White right. is going to get in some trouble here with, with the H4. Right, um, so C5 gets played. 
from Hammer, and it's like, okay, well, what what are you going to do next? Are you going to play H5? I'll take on D4. <laughs> then what are you doing? You're so happy with the H pawn. H4 so, was terrible here, I think. So Sebastian traded on C5. Queens come off the board. First bishop C3, so the king won't be able to castle. Mess up the pawn structure. Knight comes to A4. And, and I think Black's got a dominating position. Close. Very close. Because there's a, there's so much play. The only right. thing I don't like is the queen side, the bishop. Like, how do we develop? Maybe you have to go e5, knight c6, because you really can't develop without mm -hmm. losing something. Maybe knight right. a6. So white really has to switch gears now here, right? Because he's got these weak pawns on the queen side. The h pawn's doing whatever. His king's in the middle of the board. Um... <laughs> So uh, basically, I mean, White's got to switch gears to playing like, you know, use the B file, use the bishop on G2. There's lots of positions where you're castled instead of H4. Like imagine if White didn't play H4 and instead castled, right? You could get the same thing. Queens trade on yeah. D1. You get this position. Those positions are really good for White. Right. Because they get so much pressure against B7 that even if Black's winning one or two C pawns, White's got the bishop pair and has got a lot of pressure against the queen side. But I think his king is kind of going to be in the way of, of that, you know? If he comes to C2 or B3, there's always bishop f5 and bishop e6. I think the king's going to sort of mess up white. He can't put his rook on b1 here because of knight c3, you know? So it's... Yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun. And then after knight to d4, we see that Hammer's thinking here. Like, yeah. does he not want to take on c5? Like, of course, I don't know what he's thinking about now. Like, at first, it was is either he's going to take with check or is he going to take on c5? But I think taking with check allows... The rook to swing into d1 as the king gets a little bit safer on c2, getting off the open file, and then be able to bring the rook in, even though we grabbed the pawn. But then if we take on c5, he might just be fine, honestly. But yeah. we can always come back and take the pawn on c3. I think taking on c5 is probably the best route. So you can just develop. Because we got to get – how do we get our pieces out is black. And like you said, that queen side pressure is there. Like rook b1 in an open file with the b7 pawn right there. Honestly – you got to figure yeah. this out with black pieces. There's so. there's a lot for Hammer to think about. I approve of him putting in his time on this move here because um, I'll, I'll tell you some other things he could do. He could play pawn to e5 here, mm -hmm. just kick the knight, trying to play knight c6, and just yeah. finish development and wait to take which pawn he wants to. So that's mm -hmm. a whole extra option. But if he plays e5, he's got to calculate with knight b5, trying to go into c7 nice. or yeah. d6. So there's a few things to think about there. Yeah. He can also play the move rook to d8. Oh, which basically e5 threatens e5 and sees which way the king goes, right? Oh, then depending sweet. what yeah, the king think... does, uh. you know, he could go for bishop f5 or not. He could go for knight c3, knight c5, depending. So those are two big candidate moves he could play. Um, e5 I think is really strong. You got to get that e5 move eventually, especially maybe rook d8 first because with the king on c2, you do have aspirations of playing maybe bishop f5 check um, after once the king goes to c2 if he right. ever goes there. Rook D8, King C2, E5, move the knight, and then Bishop F5 check just to get an easy development move and then follow up with Knight C6, depending on where the king goes. If he goes B3, we get uh, eight, C5 for free with check. E4, if he does go E4, we just block it up. It's like it's like uh, locked up. Oh, but he does get Knight C7. But then he gets the tempo for Knight C7. Yeah, so um, it's all uh, it's all yeah. rather tricky, right? There's some stuff. There's some stuff to look at, and I think some stuff that justifies the time that uh, that Hammer's putting into this. Whew. Um. Yeah. You know, also he would face draw odds in that in that in that bullet game if this game is a draw. So that may put a little more pressure on him to try and like win this game with black as opposed to just get an okay position. He doesn't want it maybe to peter out into something too equal. Um, but Hammer's a fun. Uh, I mean, he's under ten minutes. Like, yeah, he's a great end game player. So he could he could grind out some positions even if it's not technically an advantage. Man. What is we've he going to do? We're going to see. He's going to he's going to surprise us. He's done that before. Yeah, <laughs> we've got one interesting. Um, we've got two interesting comments in the chat. I want to answer one comment from William of Orange saying not having the dark squared bishop for black kind of sucks though, and I would say if he can resolve the development of his queen side pieces, it's actually not going to be a problem in this game, because we're looking at an end game, not a middle game. In a middle game, it would suck if White had a queen on the board. They would play h5, and uh, your king would be feeling it. Yeah, but if you can make this game all about basically a battle of weaknesses on the queen side, white's got these two c pawns and black's got this b pawn, and that's what you want to make the fight about, black will be totally fine just maneuvering with the pair of knights. It could be totally okay. Um, he doesn't particularly badly need the bishop for that, so I'm going to say it could be okay. And then we also have a very interesting um, variation which I am nobody mentions, which is on e5. White can try the move c6. 
And uh, this is a very important tactical resource for white that even when you take the knight, white can take on b7. So I, I, I had my eye on this as well. Uh. That if black played either e5 or a move like knight a6 or something, that c6 yes. could be, oh. could be the response from white. Do? That's a scary move to face. Yeah. So that was something else, else that he had to calculate. If he wanted to go e5, he also had to look at that c6 line as well as knight b5. So he played rook d8 first after thinking for over four minutes, which is about yep. as long as you're going to see anybody think in these uh, rapid games. Then he played rook d8, just setting up, you know, making him spend a tempo on that king. So now he knows he's got bishop f5 later. And uh, he's holding back on e5 for a moment. He's going to play so knight no, c5 knight first. Knight a6, there we knight go. A6. Finally get developed. And then Cover e5 that. and bishop f5 finally. But right. he might go f4 here to maybe stop. That bishop needs to get our bishop has to get off the off of c8 so maybe bishop d7 bishop a4 is an idea he could even do that at this point if f4 stops e5 he can go to d7 his knight's covering b7 and he's coming to a4 still this white king is the problem right yeah if this white king were tucked away on g1 oh, maybe man. maybe white could have gotten some pressure here with you know rook b1 and stuff but as it is mm -hmm. i think hammer's got a good chance of sort of taking over positionally on the queen side even fighting against that bishop pair yeah, another another game fighting against the bishop here, and now Hammer is the one fighting against the bishop here and not having it. All right, how's the French going? How's the French going? So c4, c4 also like takes the pressure off d4. So you really only want to do it if you accomplish something. Usually, the bishop came back to d1, bishop d7, looking at bishop a4, but he had time for a3, and bishop d2, and it's just not happening. Renato okay. is. Robin is unimpressed. He's like, get back. You got nothing. And the knight just comes back to c6. And it may look like not much has happened. Like the knight moved back and forth and the white bishop moved back and forth. So you might say like, hey, you know, it's a locked position. So two tempi don't even matter anyway. Plus they each wasted two tempi. So, you know, it's all even. It's all good. But I don't think it's all good for black because c4, if c4 accomplished nothing, then he took all the pressure off of d4. White already got his accomplishment of making the black king go to f8. So black needed to sort of like accomplish something back in the center in response to that. If you just play king f8 and then play normally with nothing achieved, then eventually black's going to come under an attack on the king side here. Yeah, and as we see right now, too, uh, knight to g5 was played, and then he's actually not threatening to take on f7, so he didn't take it. He followed up with queen to b2, which makes sense. But uh, I'm trying to figure out, what do you do for white? Are you going to sack on h5? Or, like, how do you create some play besides what's here right now? Mm -hmm. only thing I can see, honestly, is sacking on h5. Knight takes h5. Pawn takes bishop takes h5. Yeah. And hopefully that works out right. But, of yeah. course, we have to defend b2 and d4, so he did that first. Yeah. But progress-wise, if we don't have a plan, like, what is... What I is, think that's the plan. I think, I think depending on what black does, you may play rook h3 first. So the guy's ready before you make the sack. Because right now, black's a little cramped up, right? So any preparatory move you can make, you might want to make. But I think eventually, that is the threat that's hanging over black's head, is white can just take on h5 at some point, and then how do you defend yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just, you just don't have enough bodies on the king side. And uh, I, see, I see white probably breaking through there eventually. I actually like that rook h3 move, is the, the move you make first, just to keep it prepped. And uh, it's very nice. It's very nice. It's also a, a very common French move. In the French yeah. line, I played a win hour or the knight c3 at least. And um, I played knight c3 against the French. But uh, I've seen a lot of lines with rook h3 being a uh, a very nice resource to use. Yeah. So I would expect rook h3 here. A uh, queen c7, part of the idea is that this white queen is on the diagonal with the black queen. So in some case, black could play like f5 or f6. Right, and you can't take with the e pawn because your queen. Such a daring move to make. Because your queen's hanging right here on f8 too. <laughs> you actually. But there's can... limited moves where black's gonna want to move the f pawn. I, I you right, know. Right. No, but that's right though. It's it's very funny that f6 could be a move. But we could keep it in mind. I mean, let's say I play knight takes h5 here. Pawn takes. Bishop takes. If I do it straight up, and black just answers with f5 there. Now nice. I don't have that target on f7, right? And you can't take e6. You can't take anything on f7. I can't take en passant. So. You know, I mean, white white probably play g4, still get some play going. But you could see how there could be a scenario where this f5 move is what black wants. Yep, and him, be, and him being totally fine. All right, Honestly, rook b1. That might be the next move. 
right now. Rook that could be the next move. Rook h3, f5. And then it's the same thing. That might be what yeah. he's thinking about here. F oh, he played rook b1. He didn't even care about f5. Yeah, if he plays f5 before white's committed to anything, if you just play f5 randomly before white's committed, then there's this maneuver, queen d2, and you do whatever, you know. Black okay. black does whatever he wants to, and then white goes knight e2, knight f4. Uh, put the knight on f4. That's going right. to be annoying. You really tie black up to like e6 and g6. You might force him to play like a bishop takes g5 concession, opening your rook. And then eventually you play f3, g4 to crack everything yeah, open. Yeah, f3, g4, yeah, rook h2, king and, d, bishop somewhere, or castle yeah. queen is high, or you can't castle, but... That but way we rooks. never make a peace sack, right? We just tie him up and then and then crack it with the pawn break. And, right. uh, yeah. And you should, should be Six pleasant minutes. White. Six minutes. The h pawn has moved again. Sebastien Joie is trying to say that h4 had some kind of a purpose to it. Hmm. But uh, rook a d one, rook to b eight. I mean, now we're gonna see bishop d seven probably. Hammer is down. I mean, three a lot minutes of time. Yeah, he's down three minutes. He's looking First, more worried than I would expect him to be. I, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Against the lower rated player. I mean, he's he's still strong. He's international master, you know. But it's the fact that like, hey, hammer is down. It's almost like they reverse roles here. Yeah. Yeah, like Sebastian didn't know that Hammer was supposed to be the boss, and he was just like, <laughs> "I can play confidently." And Hammer was like, "Wait, am I not the boss? I'm the boss today, why is it, why is he just moving like this?" Right. I mean, he plays do I need strong. to worry? I mean, at this point, he is down a full four minutes. On yeah, time. four minutes is a lot of time. I don't care. You get time back. Ten, yeah, we get you know two second increment, but. That's not going to add up with four minute difference. Yeah, that's not four great. Minutes. I mean, he just spent a minute and a half playing Rook B eight. White yep. played h5, which doesn't necessarily do that much. That shouldn't put you back into thinking. You think a minute and a half on a move, you got to have a follow-up at this time control. That's correct, especially with bishop d7 being like you didn't develop following fundamental principles, bishop d7. Did you? Oh, and then hope for the best. Like, what's next? Maybe bishop d7, e5, and bishop c6. You might have a terrible pawn structure, right. but white does too. So, and, you know, it's not a... And before a, he played rook b8, right, he had to have thought, like, my two alternatives are e5, bishop f5, or bishop d7, right? So he's looking at the two alternatives. Then he decided, well, somehow rook b8 prepares those moves in some way. I don't understand rook b8, but let's say it does. <laughs> White plays h5. You got to know which one was your plan, right? Yeah, you got to know. Almost so two minutes time. just to play e5? Yeah, four minutes left, man. And then also he has bishop e6, I guess, too, as well. Bishop e6 is an option. That was a nice move. He finally got e5 in. I mean, maybe he, was, maybe he was just singing a song in Norwegian for his stream. You oh, know, maybe hey, just okay. like that's that's true. Yeah, maybe just like took back. time out to teach a stream yeah. how to sing "Happy Birthday" in Norwegian or something. Well, that's right, and, that, and that's that's probably exactly what he was doing because I do remember Naka going to the restroom a few times, playing just like you know, five minute game, go to the bathroom, come back in two minutes, <laughs> and still win. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's like I'm good at bullets, so I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll see you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll be right back. How do they get to the oh, bullet tiebreak? On G6. Oh, if my either goodness. of these fifteen minute games ends in a draw. Then it goes to a bullet tie break. And the player playing white will have black. The player playing black will have white. But on Con Blitzstream, Sebastian Joie would have uh, draw odds if he played black in that tie break. Now Hammer's thinking how to recapture on G6. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Take towards the center and then King G7. You're fine. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> there it is. Sefer91 says, actually, Hammer is explaining the origin of his and story of his name to the stream that's why so he's not he's talking yeah. yeah guys oh wait hold on make a move so back to what i was saying blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right his chat's probably like hammer it's your move and he's just oh, so bad. relaxed sorry. that he's like yeah 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 whatever i forgot it's my move sorry well that yeah that's 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 pretty boss after all i guess just, yeah, let's see, especially if he just turns it up in the next few moves and just like, okay, guys, I got to win. Give me a minute. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be, be back. right back. Let me finish this. Bishop check seems strong. Yeah. Knight a four check. Also, oh, bishop d7, nice right? What does white do on bishop d7? I guess they play pawn c4. Oh, he can't play knight takes Because you seven. can't let bishop a4. Dang. What do you do? Bishop d7. Oh, knight d6. Oh, yikes. Yeah, you're right. c4. 
C4 it's got to be C4, right? So bishop or, D7, C4. I kind of like forcing white to move that pawn since his king is here. Then maybe you play like rook B to C8. Looking for some tactics. Looking for some yeah, tactics. He's okay, smart. he's done something. He played bishop D7. All right. Yeah, he played bishop D7. All right, so we're going to see that. We're going to see C4 from white. And then and then we're going to see hammer find some kind of a tactic. Because I think bishop E6... Bishop d5 wouldn't be anything special for black, right? Like, mm -hmm. you don't want to give white time to go into d5, so. I don't get that Check. move. I don't understand. Like, he just moves out of the way kind of thing. I liked your idea with rook uh, b or c or d to c8. Yeah. It's like just putting the rook on the file where the pawn is. I think king b2 was probably best for him, but maybe try, try to run the king to the corner where it's a little bit safer. Just like, nothing's good. I'm going to a1. Yeah, exactly. I'm just out. I'm out of here. Like, uh, hey, I'm, I'm going to get my king safe, and then we'll worry about everything else later. Yeah. Okay, so what's Hammer's idea? I mean, yeah, other than, you know, some there. long origin story. what yeah. What's his idea here? Because, you know, White wants to play knight to d6, and that might kind of clean up White's problems. As as I understand chess, that looks like it could, could do okay. Or White could put the bishop on d5, also sort of seal up some problems on the d5. Yeah, yeah. So Hammer has a question plan? too. Of like, how do you do? What do you do? The knights are, uh, are like right on top of each other. The knights kind of don't know what to do. Is Hammer telling too many stories? Because uh, I mean, I, it's not clear that he knows what he's doing on the that <laughs> that he's got a plan here on the chessboard. I mean, he I thinks for a minute randomly every move, and then just <laughs> does something that I don't know what it is. Oh man, he having a good old time over there. He just like having a ball. <laughs> Just having a ball. What I'm doing? I'm relaxing, man. We're just playing today. He's like, oh. my bishop's bucket list is to visit every square on this <laughs> diagonal, like one at a time. He forgot he was a bishop, right? So he just he just set out like a pawn that was capturing stuff. Came to D7. Right. Oh, missed yeah, E6. Right. Missed then E6. Bishop, right. That's the only one. He skipped over E6. Better sorry. step back. Better step back. Mm -hmm. Um. So if pawn to F3, then he could step back to E6 and. Uh, that would be awkward for white to trap that bishop on g2, I think. So what does white want to do here? Yeah, I figured that, that c4 pawn oh, is sorry. going to be the weakness they're covering there. How about knight e4 here? You mean bishop e4? Um, Isaiah, I think that's all oh, you said. Never mind. Okay. Somebody says Guy Hammer is talking down on his position. <laughs> there were 216 viewers a while ago. North America must have finally woke. Yeah, it's, it is Saturday. So. Guess Pruis and Canty the best. Pruis and Canty. That's what's up. Yes, sir. Furry footed. Good to see you, man. Yeah. All right, bishop to b2. All right. Well, bishop takes e2 seems logical. Taking the pawn, he attacked. But uh, if Hammer thinks for a minute and plays bishop back to e6, man, I'm <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to lose it, right? You know, it's yeah. done. We're, we're done. We're done today. When is Xiang versus Wei Yi? Uh, Xiang versus Wei Yi is this, uh, this evening, 6 p.m., Pacific time, if I'm not mistaken. That's uh, eight and a half hours from now. Nine Eastern. That's the nice. Junior Speed Chess Championship final. That's pretty anticipated, the two, oh, two, two 2,700 juniors. Mm -hmm. That's intense. F6, all right, he didn't take on E2, but at least he stopped moving his bishop back and forth. Well, well not yet. He has to move it now. Yeah, now it's coming again. So I now it'll hit it. E6, and then, then H3 will be all that's left. F6. How could you play F6, Hammer? How could you play F6? Seriously, you let this guy get his bishop out and then play F3 with his bishop out on this good square. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what you wanted. Yeah, what? that bishop's very nice, too. I mean, bishop in and then E4. Like, bishop D7, Hammer got to move faster. Okay, Hammer just got to move faster. He is getting very low on time. I, I I don't know what's going on here. Let me let me check over to see what Van Camp is doing. It's probably going to be more, more oh, logical. Yeah. So... Right. Last time we were here, um, rook b1 was played. Black did play f5, knight e2, knight f3. He's just setting up for knight f4, controlling this whole diagonal first. There's the knight on f4. Then the other knight comes back to g5, and here we are. 30 seconds left for Renato Terry, and like all the pieces still, still on the board, everything left to figure out and play. Mm-hmm. What about knight takes h5 here? Just try to win the game. Why not? Do it. He did it. All right. 
Night takes H5. Wow. Well, that's that took strong. like two seconds to see. Absolutely. He knew it was coming. You know, like it's uh, it's always like I never lost a French game over the board with white pieces. So, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I'll never have problems with the French. And Blitz games, okay. It's that's impossible, different. James. You can't have a perfect record against every opening unless you never play in tournaments. <laughs> Oh man, I have never lost to the. You've never lost to the French. Never lost with with your Scotch thing. That's right. That's right. Have you lost to the Sicilian? I have. I've lost with two games, and I've lost. Um, I've lost against, which is a few games as well. So okay, because otherwise I was gonna say you made like national master without ever playing a game. Without, ever, like, right, without losing a game, right? You played. Yo, you man. played one tournament, beat every opening, and then retired and said these openings got nothing. <laughs> these good. openings all got nothing. So what is actually going on here? Uh, he's just up. Bishop takes h5, king f8, and then you just follow up. Technique, maybe bishop g6, yeah. king e2, g4, f4. All these are moves. It's nice. It's good to have a lot of moves that are moves. Yeah. He could also moves. play g4, maybe. Like g4, g4, if he wants to um, keep that bishop from coming to e8 would be the reason there. Yeah. Plays uh, b4. But it looks like he just wants to flow to the h file. Yeah, James Kinsey has never lost a game of chess. I'm not like chess. Ha! I wish, I wish, but yeah. then actually no, because I'll never get better. Right. <laughs> but then I'll never have to if I'm never losing. <laughs> you never have to. <laughs> Before go chess, bro says Lee chess chess. Lee chess right. chess 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 chess. Let's go chess. Ten yeah, Bishop G6 forward. and Bishop F6 to go after the Black King. Um, looks very strong, but when you go bishop g6, black will play bishop e8 and force you to trade your good bishop. I, so Yeah, I saw that, yeah. and I was like, I'm not a fan of trading that bishop, honestly. Yeah. So let's just not do that. you so got to take bishop. your opponent's defensive resources into account. Mm -hmm. That's probably oh. why he didn't play g4, too, then. We had people in both chats suggested at the same time. And it's true, that's the first move I looked at, too. Mango, plebe, and chess player six oh four. That's my first thought too. I saw that position. I was like, Bishop G six, Rook G seven, Bishop F six, good night. Mm -hmm. But um but then uh you know I got Bishop that extra game. process where I look for my opponent's defensive stuff. Yep. So um he's thinking that his bishop might even be annoying on A four in some cases, but mm -hmm. the real I key is Bishop D one. Because you see the disconnection in the bishop with the like maybe I don't know why e2 wasn't the move. Bishop mm -hmm. e2 could have been a little bit better. It's all fine. What is oh. that? I thought he would play bishop a4 now. That is confusing. Yeah. That's very confusing. Maybe his opponent's time trouble is giving him fits. But anyway, he's got a huge advantage, so I'm going to click over to the other game. I'm going to see what Hammer's doing. Hopefully it won't drive me totally crazy. Well, we got 46 seconds. So knight c3, knight b4 was played. Sure, g4, g5, a5 takes. Knight e4. The, the H file is finally looking pretty good. I guess Bishop G6 is his plan to cover the incursions. Okay, so so he's got this situation. This is a, this is a very competitive game. Yeah, he's strong. Like he's playing really strong here. Three, four, five, three, four, five. Everything's even. He's gonna try and play B5 at some point to break open the White King's position a little bit more. Trade one of his doubled pawns. Yeah, yeah, and that double up. Yeah, I think white white is just fine. Like white's mm -hmm. okay. I think it's equal, and I think white's slightly better. What about Maybe knight c three? How does white answer the move knight c three? I thought the same thing. The knight c three is really strong. Knight takes pawn takes, and what do you do? Rook. Gotta keep somewhere. our eyes on that. Rook. That's where it is. That's exactly what he did. That's what he automatic. did. Automatic. All right, knight c three. Well, it was automatic. He kind of he kind of has to move fast because it's got thirty one seconds on the clock. Yeah, he spent 17 seconds on it. So, honestly, automatic would have been better. One second right. would have been better than 17 right. here. Right. Man, that seems like something wrong there. Can't you just take everything or no? What about rook c8 then? Rook b to c8. No, maybe not. Or b5? b5, yeah, b5 now. It's time to open up because I'm I am b1. I guess I Hammer b1. thought it was time to think for 25 seconds. He's like, I want to play ultra bullet. Bullet's not good yeah. enough. There he is, guys. He played B5. He hears us in the chat over here. Yeah. Man, oh, man. Yeah, Hammer is taking this, like, this storytelling to, like, a new level, A new man. level. All right, guys. I got 20 <laughs> seconds. I got to play. No more stories until I win. All right. 96 is threatened. Oh, and that a, is a threat. Enough time <laughs> to deal with that? 
five seconds on the clock, five, I immediately four, forgot three? about it already. What on earth is... Rook takes d5. Hammer is straight up in a losing position now. Pawn takes, what do you do? Rook c8, 96? Planning rook c8. That's a tempo. Hey, yep, I'm out of your way. Now King White's going to play... Okay. White wants to play e4. Sack the a pawn and just lock him out of the game. E4. Oh, e4 would be too strong. E4, knight a2, e4, king b2, what do you care? It's e4, over. E4, he might go down. Yep. After e4. He played king a2, luckily. Cool. So maybe knight a4, knight a4 doesn't help. Oh, rook a1. That works. I mean, a8. Now rook a1 and then what? Bishop b1. That's ugly. It can be played. Bishop b1's interesting. That's true. Bishop b1 is a real move there. It is. Uh, rook takes, snap on b2, take on b1. It's funny, but... But maybe on bishop b1, white can play a3. Yeah, and no, then, like that, that, that can't work. For then, some like, reason, your, like, your rook, just... your bishop's only defended by the knight. The knight's only defended by the pawn. Like... <laughs> Too many things hanging. Yeah. Rook a4. Oh, He's but Hammer's definitely losing a. this game, man. He's definitely losing this game. He's doing nothing here. Five wins. Nice C5. So does E4. I mean, I would just... I don't want to think about, about anything. I want to play E4 and then just watch him flag if I'm white. A3, A3. what are you doing? Why are you Why are you so complicated, man? Whoa. Oh, that is complicated. Dang. Why are you doing something complicated? Your oh, opponent's got three a seconds, and you're in a winning position. Do not make your life harder. This should be one. Hammer sacked a... A whole rook at this point in an end game, yeah. so it's not looking good. It's not like he's, you know, oh, he sacked the rook. He's gonna win in four. Like this is not a move. This is uh, this is yeah, really this is pitiful. House. Oh, that's a nail in the coffin. D pawn, go go go. Is there a mate or something? I don't see one. There's a check. Hammer once got a perpetual like this with a rook on like <laughs> yeah, C four, B four, whatever, but not today. He yeah, he's just gonna resign it. That's it. Wow, wow. Wow, first one. What? Wait, what? I can't believe it. Too much storytelling. That was ridiculous. Too much storytelling. Nice, mad. No stories for anybody. No all story. Right. And Van Campen Brand. took care of business. I mean, just, just all normal, like, mm -mm -mm. got the A file, just walking around, taking stuff, game over. What? Van Hammer! You had a man. chance to be a legend. You could have been a legend like Var if you won this <laughs> knockout today. And now you messed up my predictions. You messed up my brackets. You messed up the hopes and aspirations of all the Norway Gnomes fans. And for Dang. what? Just to tell a story about your name? <laughs> Do we really care that much? I mean, it's a hammer. We know what a hammer oh, is. Man. Oh, man, that was great. Yeah. Yeah. He just he just jumped off the deep end, guys. People in the chat know. He just straight up just jumped off the deep end with yeah. a smile the way down it just I, was not and i don't want to take away from sebastian i mean he just had a huge upset you know i'm sure he's i'm sure he's pumped and the can and the can fans probably the con fans probably want us to you know give oh, him some give him some credit and say that he's got a chance here against robin van campen in the final mm -hmm. but i guess just the perspective from which i was watching that game it was like like hammer just just committed suicide on the clock like it's not like he like yeah that's threw right. the game with bad moves on purpose but he just sat there for like minutes and minutes doing nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when the guy threatened 96 check, he had like five seconds on his clock. <laughs> no, no, still, you have to think that out. And it was no time to think. Like five it's seconds to play this complicated play. position. It's probably a good position for him, but he just didn't have any time on the clock. Right. So, I don't know. Felt That's like, felt like a little bit of a, of a, of a questionable hammer moment to me. Yeah, just yeah. All right, so I guess that right. sets up the finals are going to be Sebastian Joie against Robin Van Campen and Renato Terry versus Jan Ludwig Hammer. Sebastian Joie will have white. The con had the biggest fan growth this week, so he'll have white against Van Campen. He'll have um, draw odds if it comes to that in the bullet game. Likewise, Renato Terry is going to have white against Jan Ludwig, and uh, and then uh, draw odds if it comes to bullet there. So, um, by my estimation, this puts the gnomes in a really tough spot in the division right now. Yeah, it does. Because they've lost does. two fan club matches already, week one and week two. 
Mm-hmm. So they can't count on their fan club. They were supposed to count on Jan Ludwig. Now their leader lost. And I don't really... S- I'm starting to not really see how they make it into the summer series championships at this point. What is, they have how many points they have zero right now? No, they have three. I mean, they got three last week from, from hammer, yeah. but like they're in danger of not really adding to that this any week. Points. I was just about to say, yeah, any points at you all know. this week. Yikes. Three, that could be tough. So. Yeah. So, so this is a fun stat. Montreal Chess Bras has 10 out of the possible 11 points. So. Right. And All they're kind of- basically like clinching a playoff spot almost at this point. Just, I mean, they've got they yeah, got I'm 10 here, points so in the bank. That's Yep. It's easy. I mean, they are uh they're doing it. Just got yeah. the point. Oh wow, and uh Blitzstream Canis just got can just got their first points of the summer series. Which right. Still- leaves um or first points so how many points did blitzstream just get for that well they got at least two points either two or three depending on how sebastian does in the final match with uh van campen so i mean basically like we could see khan i uh, pass norway like norway could end this week in fourth place i could i could see that i could see that very likely happening at this point here we go. The games have started. All right. Games underway. Um, this is the third, fourth place match with uh, Renato Terry as white here. And then uh, our championship match over here, if I can get it to click up. Ah, the very exciting quadruple Fianchetto. I hate that, man. I hate that. <laughs> Everybody could Fianchetto. Hate it. At least he took with his queen and not his knight. So I'm going to yeah. give Sebastian credit for that. But basically what I hate about quadruple Fianchetto is just all the bishops getting traded. Yeah, um, and now you're just chilling with knights, and it's a weird game. Yeah, if Open all the game. bishops get traded, just takes a lot out of the game. So I don't like to see all the bishops just on the same diagonals just getting traded. And uh, my least favorite position in Fisher Random Chess is bishop h1 and a1. Because then, you know, the players just play b3, B6, G3, G6, they trade all four bishops. And again, it's just like, mm. yeah. You emptied the board, you know. I think they should take those positions out of out of the 960. <laughs> just anything know. with the with the bishops in the corners. Right. Just 958. Yeah. Just, just yeah. take a couple out. Take a few of those out of there. Rook C8. Yeah. And they should take this out of like chess too. I mean, chess is chess is pretty much dead anyway so you know yeah. they gotta they gotta say this one position is done for but g6 b6 finch at all the bishops i mean no man no it's boring no we're going to the other game <laughs> <laughs> and let's look at uh oh i like this black has a nice attack going yeah what hammer's pissed off hammer is mad he's like no yeah. i am about to mate someone something somebody has to take that. yeah He's like, you said Queen's Gambit declined. I thought this was a stone wall. Let's go. Stone, right. F5. 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 So registration has officially opened for the Blizzard, for Minnesota Blizzard, and the uh, for the next match, the club match. Right. So, that's correct. So there you go. Boom. Uh, chess chess is dead. I mean, chess is dead for, you know, 2,600 plus players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah you can't you, there's no way you could like legislate a rule that people can't play a certain opening unfortunately but um and of course reducing the number of openings would just mean they would study the ones they are playing even more so actually i mean it would be a it would be a bad approach like yeah, anything you take out you're just stuff. you're just making it worse you know to look at the other opening even 50 moves further ahead But, um, okay, C-pawn trade on D5 for white. Now, why? In general, you don't usually want to do that because the E6 pawn is kind of a bad pawn for black. So usually you don't want to trade it. That means that Mr. Terry has some idea on the C-file, like, immediately. And I think he wants to play bishop C6, trade that bishop, and then keep a piece on C6 if possible. And and just beat down on that C7 pawn. 
I would probably go rook f6 here because I'm like, you know what? I need to just start. I need to first off cover c6. Yeah. Secondly, I know I need to rook lift and, and finish this attack. So rook yeah. f6 to h6 and bishop d6 is my plan. You know you want to do that thing anyway, so you just, just do it. Just do it. Like, I don't want to do it. I know what he's trying. C6 is definitely vulnerable. And you, I know you're probably going to pile on a C file. So I always have rook c8 when that happens. So rook f6, rook h6, bishop d6, and go for mate. That's yeah. it. Nothing else. Not even thinking about anything else. It's that looks good to no me, too. Anything else. But, of course, uh, Hammer is thinking about everything else right now. He literally just thinks about every single move, as we see here. I think he, today's just not his day right now, um, which you have off days because he did. Uh, he was crushing last week much faster. I mean, crushing quickly, crushing positions, as he always does. Yeah. This week is a little different, and usually that can psychologically put a toll on you no matter how strong you are. Yeah. So it's um that's probably you know he's he's already down two minutes on time. It's true. Last week every game he played was like a high had like a highlight real moment in it. Every game yep. had every something game. sharp. It did. It's crazy. That was like. And oh, today man. it's like he's napping or I guess storytelling. But you know same <laughs> same thing. If you're playing a chess tournament and you're storytelling or you're napping, that pretty much it's comes true. out to the same, yeah. to the same mm -hmm. thing. So. And actually, no. I think the thing that Rick F6, I just found it, was the bishop takes d7, queen takes knight e5, followed by f4. So that's strong. So he's, he's kind of contemplating that. And then if he moved the knight, he always goes to e5. So I think this was really strong. He might need to go maybe reverse the move order, try bishop mm -hmm. d6 first. Try bishop d6 You might, might have to snap that e5 knight. Cause White might want to play knight e5 anyway, right? On any yeah. on any move right. from black, just plop, plop it in there. Right. And just get rid of it. Because you have to get rid of that knight because... He's going to wreak havoc, or he's just going to stay there the entire time. Because we did make the D five F pushes, so we can never kick the knight. So we just got to get rid of it. You know? Yeah. But man. Weird. So folks, if you're not interested in 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 hearing about Jan Ludwig's game and hearing about the moves of it, you could always go over to his channel, where I'm sure he's not talking about his game, but telling you about like you know the evolutionary history of Norway's state bird or something like that. Um, but if uh, but if you want to hear about the actual moves, we're we're covering the moves here. That's right. And I, he actually did finish with rook f6. That's yeah. what he went with. It's good. So the critical line is bishop takes d7, queen takes, B7, and he's swinging in at knight e5. I mean, forcing tempo, queen got to go somewhere, and then let's see what's up. So, oh, this is, uh, now let's look at some chess bra stuff. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah. So in the chess bra game, they've traded the bishops on g2 and b7. Now there's just, you know, g7 and b2 to trade. Um... But whatever. I mean, there's still some pieces. It's still interesting. Black's trying to play b5 here. Um, I wonder if oh he played rook but, c8, rook yeah, rook's five, attack. and b5. But maybe the rook's just weird on e5. Ah, uh, could have maybe tried rook e5 right away, hit the queen, yep. and then and play then b5. b5. But there always be knight c6 hanging over you too. Oh yeah, that's ugly. So, yeah, that. so rook c8, knight back to c3 to stop b5, and. I don't know. They could go rook c5, knight a4, rook c8, knight c3 or something. All right. Knight e5 was played by Terry. And Hammer trades it. Puts the rook on g6. F3. This game's going to be pretty interesting as long as, as long as Hammer keeps moving. So he just played knight e5. He just didn't want to give up that bishop. I understand. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, he figured knight e5 was coming no matter what, and he was going to have to trade it. So actually, he decided all in all, he still wanted his rook on the third rank when that happened. So he did it anyway, yeah. yeah. And there was no point putting his bishop on d6 if white was going to just plop a piece on e5. Um, So yeah, so that's what he did. So now what is black do? Knight g5? I actually had a game one time. I had a Bogo Indian with the black pieces. Mm -hmm. And I played uh, knight to g5 here in a similar fashion. To right. play knight h3 because I did have a bishop on b7 and I had a rook somewhere similar to like g6. So the normal move would be knight g5, just like you say. The other move he might be thinking about, if he's thinking about his game at all, is bishop c5. <laughs> bishop c5 is bishop interesting c5 as too, well because it's, that's tactical. Because right. let's say bishop c5, he takes the knight. I mean, we gotta yeah. we gotta go for it, right? He's gonna yeah. bait you into doing that. Check. We take on e3, king h1, and then uh, was it queen g5 for the follow up? I was thinking maybe just rook h6, threatening rook h2. Oh, man. There we go with the uh, tactics. Oh, he got knight f3, though. But then, or does he? If knight f3, then four. we can take it, the pawn on e4, yeah. right, and kick oh, him. Oh, man. That's probably what he's thinking about right now. He is thinking think about it. 
The other thing is normally bishop c5 wouldn't do anything. White wouldn't even think about taking the knight. They would just play bishop d4 in response, mm -hmm. right? But here, black could trade on d4 and play queen g5. And it hits g2 oh my goodness. and d2 the and queen e3. Oh, yeah, lights out. Lights so out. so actually, he can think about bishop c5 if he wants to. That's and it, it could be complicated. Uh, if white plays a move like queen e2 just to cover it, he could trade on d2, queen d2, and then queen g5, hitting g2 and e3 again. Hmm. So th That's the critical test is yeah. bishop to c5. And he is in a think tank. He's going to take, he's going to calculate this to the finish on every single move. Yeah. For people wondering about the schedule, no. The schedule goes after PCL, after Pro Chess League, we got St. Louis. And then we've got the Junior Speed Chess Championships Finals. So it's a big chess day today. It's like, you know, huge. 10, 12 hours of uh, consecutive, yeah, at least 12 hours of consecutive high level chess. What's up, Mildap? Good to see you in the chat, man. What's up, bro? How are you? Hammer's really thinking about it. Really thinking about it. He is in the think tank, guys. I mean, straight up just. Thinking. Look at him. I mean, eight minutes. He's done this last game too. Is anyone in Hammer's chat right now? Is he tell is he telling more stories? Can anyone let us know right now? Is he thinking or is he telling stories? We just need to know so we understand where he is psychologically right now. Yeah. If he's thinking or not. Yeah, I want to know. Is he looking ten moves ahead at Bishop C five or is he just like, you know, there's a certain berry that grows in the <laughs> In the mountains of Norway, which is quite good if you add it to your porridge. Oh, you know, and in the they morning. talk about. I just saw in the chat someone was talking about Norway's bird. He's talking about the kingbird. Oh, the kingbird flies in this kind of habitat and in the environment. Oh, uh -huh. it's my move. Let me make a move. He's looking at Bishop C five. Says William of Orange. Hammer just actually told a story of Norway's. No national way, bird. man. <laughs> You're talking about the national bird. <laughs> this one he did in 1920, guys. The white throated dipper. Oh man. I guess I guess fans of because <laughs> hammer hammer is the strongest uh, hammer you know out there. Okay. Bishop C five. Bishop C five. The man was correct. All right. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at that. He did it. His rook is stupid, and he may be dead lost. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Four minutes on bishop c5. That should be cool. No, I mean, he's not dead loss. If he wanted to, he could have just played knight g5 e6. This move here should be played with, you know, some confidence, some some aggression, some some sense that you're about to, to beat somebody down. Yeah, right. Uh, this move, I mean, it immediately, like, you're attacking. I, I, went, I went back, and I looked at a bunch of games, and I looked at a bunch of tactics, and I was looking at them, and I started to notice this pattern that usually it was taking four pieces. Usually mm -hmm. four pieces was like a guaranteed attack with four. So with three and two, it was still simple tactics or like, you know, stuff that you get in Puzzle Rush and stuff like that just because based on the position, it's not a most common or general rule that, that gives you success. But a general rule that gives you success is what I've been seeing is usually it takes four pieces. So the queen, rook, knight right now, and the bishop, I see this success – in this attack being almost imminent out of nowhere. In the next move, if he doesn't figure this out, Queen G5 is like lights out, you know? So yeah, Queen the... G5 is coming so strong. So, I mean, the pressure's on Terry here. Hopefully, when 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 Jan Ludwig thought for four minutes, he was like, okay, he's not just looking at Knight G5. Like, maybe he, yeah. he, he hopefully noticed Bishop C5 and put some thought into it himself. Yeah, himself, right. So he's so already been working on an answer because... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's... that's a very good thing that David mentioned, guys, too, as well. It's like uh, when you when you're in this phase, if they start to think, and it's not the most common move. For instance, he could take on d2. He could play knight g5. You want to start thinking about what are they thinking about? What 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 if they do the crazy move on the board, like bishop to c5? And then when he makes his move, like he did, you're yeah. already two minutes into thinking about it, as right. opposed to like start thinking as soon as he moves. Then you waste time. And then you go into this realm of like, I'm losing what is life supposed to be like? And what is this move? I didn't, I don't understand what I'm going through in life, you know? So that's what happens, but you should always be thinking on their time, always be thinking on their time. So you be prepared. Yeah. And here, I mean, time could become an issue. It could, be, it could get pretty complicated. I mean, there could be some scenarios where black doesn't win immediately or lose immediately. Like they get enough for the attack to keep it interesting. Like, you know, a couple pawns, some threats, and uh, you might you might need to play a long game with a lot of difficult moves, so you might need all that all that resource That's right. on your clock. That's right. 
Yep, yeah, that's correct. And he has about three minutes left before time is even. So he is thinking about here. Honestly, I don't know what the answer is to this. Rook E1, Queen G5. You know, so what's the answer to this move? I don't know. I don't know. Queen E2, I think, may be the only thing. Oh, but still, well, yeah, yeah. Queen E2, Queen G5 is not the same anymore because G2 is actually defended. So, oh, right. but take on D2 and then Queen G5. So if Rook E1, Bishop takes E3, puzzle rush. Oh, my yep. goodness. That's nasty. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You might need to take all your time to figure this one out. Yeah, so <laughs> Queen E2, let's say we play Knight D2, Queen D2, Queen G5, then Bishop yep. D4. Bishop takes D4 wins. If the oh, pawn man. takes, it loses the queen. If the queen <laughs> takes, it loses G2. This is out. Okay, Hammer, Hammer. So, you know, all right. His story is just getting better now. He's feeling, feeling better about himself. Bishop c5 is very, very strong, guys. I don't see a way out of that one. Yeah. We got oh, we got just... really helpful news in the back of our ears saying that if Hammer loses, the gnomes cannot win the group. And uh, I think we figured out the gnomes can't win the group when they lost two out of two fan club matches so far. This, this is, uh, yeah, you can't win the group and lose every fan club match. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. but can't he what to do here? Queen E2. Um, because. Uh, Whoa. Other well, game actually, got interesting too. But yeah. I've taken a knight, bishop take. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of tactics in there. He right. If Rook's take the five, he can just take with his knight, bring it to E6, and Hammer's a happy camper. Oh, the next game is interesting though. But yeah, it's heated up, right? Three. So if we there's click a, over there, the board. how did and this thing happen? So right. we're sitting here. White's just stopping b5. Black's just wishing he could play b5. Nothing too much happening. Then bishop h6 comes. And he follows up with just absolute aggression. Sacks his d6 pawn. That's how he got things so intense. Wow. Knight d3. That wins something. <laughs> You're going to something. feel that. Wait, why did he play rook takes d6? I mean, d3, did he not yeah, realize he had a problem here? Rook takes... This was so dynamic from from uh, from Van Campen. So I guess if White takes on e4, um, Black would trade, trade, and take, and like d6 is hanging and stuff, but e3 is hanging too. Yeah, e3 is hanging, and knight d3 is coming. So White can't cover everything. Hmm. Very interesting. But I don't think rook d6 knight d3 looks like the right solution. I think he went look. wrong here. Uh, Blitzstream did it. Just taking on C1 should be totally fine. Mm -hmm. And then you just come back to D3 and hit the B2 bishop. After Rook takes F6, you also mm -hmm. have bishop G7. Um, but I think he's trying to find the absolute most accurate way to do this. Maybe mm -hmm. even knight E5 is actually a legit threat as well. Knight E5 threatening knight takes F3, but I think taking the material is just better. Yeah, actually F6 is hanging, so knight E5 will be a blunder. Mm-hmm. You uh, oh, you can take on b2 as well, yeah. And then he takes on f6, he played bishop g7. Just he said, yeah, back. I was thinking about bishop g7 and queen e7. I was wondering if he could throw one of those in and then take something. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's so much to calculate, we weren't we weren't watching long enough to figure out everything that they were looking at here, yeah. Um, so now let's say the bailout option for white is to play rook takes d3. How badly does that go? Pawn takes. And then the knight on, on C2 is hanging, and on queen D3, there's queen F3. And white cannot cannot save that position. So yeah, that, this, that this bailout is not available. If he saves this rook, then knight takes B2. Then he has to take on E4 and hope to trap that knight, but he won't succeed. Okay, he's going to go knight E1 maybe. He actually took it. it yeah. Takes D3. yeah. He's, he's probably planning to play knight E1 to try and keep the game going. Yeah. But he's going to have trouble recapturing that pawn on d3 for free. I mean, Black's going to have tactical resources. Black's going to have bishop h6. Black's going to have bishop h6. Watch out, man. Knight d1, yeah. oh, bishop man. h6. Jeez. But you can't cover all this. Like, this is just almost like a crush after this. I mean, yeah. this is like, this is rough. This is very rough to defend. Too many weaknesses. I got open files. The pieces, yeah, white, white has a cluster of pieces, which is nice. Chemistry's nice. It's just not doing anything. Yeah, you know, all the pieces are together. They're nice, looking good. They developed. They just can't do anything. I think yeah. a lot of you have probably had this kind of situation, like me, where you're like, if I can just defend f3 and take on d3, 
then I can make a fight out of this game, right? Like, I know I lost an exchange, but I can get a pawn or two. I can keep the game. I can keep it going, right? I can make him work for it. But the fact is, like, somehow you never quite have enough time to do it, right? Like, you play knight e1, then they attack e3. You never quite have time to take d3. If you take d3, they get into f3. So you just you just never quite have the time dynamically to achieve everything that you sort of are imagining you could do. And... You know, my instincts often tell me, like, I'm not going to be able to do what I want. Why? Um, but uh, there it is. He's trying. So now, on queen takes d3, for example, and boy, did Van Kampen play that fast. On queen takes d3, I think Van Kampen has queen takes f3 anyway. Oh, he does. Right? I was thinking bishop h6 like you were. That's yeah, what bishop. he's got. That's what he's got in mind. Right. So, you know, right. he just very quickly puts his rook on the d file and says, hey, you're not going to be able to clean up on d3. Mm -hmm. right you're not going to get everything you want this game he's also looking at the move knight g4 now so i'll just show that okay. idea a4 for hey. white just a stupid Four. move to show my point knight g4 hitting e3 pawn takes knight rook takes d4 oh boy and it mate. Oh, and if my pawn goodness. takes it's it's over right it's like mate or the queen because yeah. of and these diagonals. Rook files open i got rook e2 if i need it i mean we're not yeah. really but close yeah Man, mates everywhere. King mates. F1, Queen H1. So, um, all right, Queen takes D3 was played. But just to show you, I mean, like, if White keeps trying to organize things, at some point, Black's going to finish him with these with these tactics on the E and D files. It's not going to be easy. So now just Queen F3 and uh, mop up mop up time. And that's going to be big for Van Camp and Yeah, it's going to be And huge. for you, because you're going to have out-predicted me, man. That's right. That's right. Let's go. <laughs> Finally, we are going ahead here thanks for the subscription over here three months from bruja web bruja uh, um, and crazy coffee man said i just found the coolest emote in the list can't he will be jealous it says sith lord i'm a jedi so um funny you're very funny crazy coffee man <laughs> very funny Thank you for so he's, queen he's thinking yeah. now is there some kind of problem is there some trick is queen f3 not so simple queen f3 I'm threatening queen takes e3 check, so it's not like there's a million things white can do. You know, if they try and desperado their queen on g6, then they're done. Okay, he did something. Let's see it. Queen f3. Yeah, yeah okay. Queen takes f3. Yeah. Not sure why he thought a minute about it. There must be some kind of tricky move that maybe like knight d5 or something that he had to double That's check. exactly what he played, too. <laughs> yeah, because he was realizing. He instant knight d5. Yeah. So that Man. stops knight e3 and. Also, his queen's hanging. Right, and the queen's still hanging. So he can play a move like queen e4 probably here. I was just thinking. Just if not, queen, queen h5 center. is good too. Let's put the queen in there. What about rook takes d5? Yeah, not a move. It looks good though. It looks pretty good. Rook takes d5. Mm -hmm. Pawn uh, takes pawn d5. Takes, and then, oh, you just have to move the queen still. Queen then you could take on e3 or d5, but basically we've just given back the extra exchange. Yeah, it's no fun. So... Well, why is he thinking now? I mean, I thought this is what he was thinking about last move. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. When you go into those long thinks and you still got to think after that. I guess he's big on the double checking today. Yeah. Because Black's going to get knight takes b6 if he trades queens with queen e4. So maybe he wants to keep it in the middle game. Right? Queen h5, that's the right move. He did it. Oh, that's sweet. Because knight Cause g4. Now if knight b6, knight g4, and it's like pretty obvious White's that White's going to get thrashed. Mm-hmm. So keep the queens on the board. That's that's a good decision. I mean, normally when you've got this material advantage, you want to simplify. But honestly, once you've taken f3, the white king is so weak that it can be easier to convert in a middle game than in an end game. That's correct. That's correct. I am a fan of keeping the queens on too, unless I'm just winning material. That's looking easy. Let's get back to the sack game for a second too. There's it's too much. These games are both interesting. So eventually, Renato Terry took on e4, which I also was thinking he absolutely had to. I didn't think there was anything better than that. Bishop e3 check, King h1. Here I thought about Rook h6, as you guys remember, but um, he just took on e4. And this is the kind of situation that where I was thinking like it's going to be important to have time left, right? Because after queen e2, pawn d4, basically, Hammer's got some compensation for the piece, right? He's got two pawns, but it's complicated, right? So there's going to be, like, a whole long game to play. This is where, if you're Renato Terry, you're like, I should have been I should have been concentrating when Hammer thought for four minutes about bishop c5. I should have been concentrating, right. should have realized he was going to play bishop c5. Then it wouldn't have taken me six minutes to take the knight. I would have yeah. known. 
you know, a couple minutes sooner than I needed to take this night. And now instead of having a minute and a half in this complicated position, you know, he could have three and a half or four minutes. And that's what he really needed. Yeah, because he's now so much time here. I mean, it's uh, five minutes almost against, you know, 26 plus, 2,600 plus feet rated players. It's just scary. Yeah, that's, situation. that's a yeah. problematic situation here on the clock for him. I mean, Hammer can always play C5 to support that D pawn. So the question is, can Terry ever like attack and win the E4 pawn somehow? He also has to watch out for Bishop takes E3 followed by E3, right? Like kicking his stuff and taking on G2. Does oh, that, yeah. Does that win here by any chance? <laughs> Ooh, Bishop takes... Oh, he just plays okay. C5. He, I mean, you know, Hammer maybe didn't want to calculate. But let's say we play Bishop takes E3. All right. I mean, it's either Queen takes or Rook takes. Pretty much doesn't make a difference. So let's say Rook takes E3. Uh... Then Rook takes D4 would be the move. And White comes out okay. All yeah, right. it looks like he does. So that was the thought. So he plays C5 first. Now with C5, he's definitely threatening that. Bishop takes E3 and E3. There's no Rook takes D4 anymore. So Bishop A6 trying to get rid of that Bishop. That's a problem. Maybe he's looking at a draw with Bishop C6, Bishop B5, and stuff like that. But um, all right, Hammer. Yeah, he's up. he's up. Four six minutes basically. Let's do this. What? I guess he can chase his bishop forever on this diagonal. This could actually be a draw. <laughs> oh, bishop c six, bishop d five, bishop c six, bishop b seven. Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. yeah queen g five don't work. Yikes! And he is thinking. He is in the think tank here. Yeah, he's not like... pumped about that. This is a yeah. great resource for Renato to find with a minute on the clock. If he can get the light squared bishops off the board, a lot of Hammer's energy just is going to dissipate. There he goes. He might lock him out with like d3. He's just oh, going to play g5. queen g5, right? Wow, that's strong. Just oh, to grab man. the pawn on e5 and keep the game going like that. How do you stop this though? Oh, g3. G3 is the only move. Yeah. Then I can take back on d2. Or he had queen e2. But oh, he did it this way because on queen, queen takes e5, g3. he wants to play queen b7, hitting the rook. Rook to e8, and then queen takes e4. Ruining black's Yikes. hopes and dreams. Oh, yeah. Because of mate on f8. That. Yeah, so he can't take on e5. He gotta be real oh, that's here. nasty. That's nasty. Yeah. Hammer was counting on queen e2, queen e5 there, I bet. Mm -hmm. Or maybe bishop takes d2 and then queen e5. Maybe that could still do it for him. Yeah, he could play like that. Yikes. What do you what get do you the third pawn? Do? Get the third pawn. I mean, I think he's got to. And then just hope that that e pawn is so strong and the bishop on b2 is locked out. And he can just play this position with the pawns against bishop. All right, bishop d2. Right. Now, if rook e8, queen f7. But actually, the, the rook can't even capture back on d2, so he got his piece back. All he has to do is hide, and he's winning. And he's winning, right? yeah. Right? He can just oh, keep his bishop. Pawn. He's up a pawn, and his position's great. Or, you know, rook. good enough. <laughs> great right. might be a little exaggeration, but good yeah. enough is fair. He's doing better, though. <laughs> rook e6 or rook e8 and just double up just hit the weak pawn I don't well know no what wonder he was expecting white to play queen e2 the knight was like yeah i mean i was also shocked by g3 i thought the only move was queen e2 yeah and the reason was you know in my subconscious also i knew the queen had to defend the knight on d2 that was her job so and queen e2 actually blundered to d3 you had a d3 right in between it oh was that not going to work either let's see yeah, queen g5 mm -hmm. queen e2 d3 oh man so Hammer was just killing him or something, right? Yeah, D3 wins on the spot. Knight takes E4, take the queen. Queen E3? Like, dang. What, what kind of a weird approach is that, Hammer? Your what bishop can't move on D2. He didn't take it. Oh, my goodness. Well, I probably wouldn't. I guess you don't take it because that pawn structure is so good. But what is wow, he? he did go queen E3, though. Well, now what's he doing? Rook G5 and take on E5, no? Is that bad? Oh, that is a move. That is a <laughs> nice I mean, why not? It's a free pawn got to get rid of it get do find something to do rook g5 and take you can't even go to rook e1 i i mean i do not like the look of this bishop i mean he's like you know one one breath one queen c2 away from being forced to go to a5 to hide and once he's on a5 he's not very good so yeah, it's looking weird there he is rook g5 by the way we have a result robin did win oh where your bishop going yeah bishop a5 Oh, yeah. Sorry we didn't get to see the end of each game, but um, let's see real quick. Queen h5. Yep. Knight c6. Knight takes d5. 
Rook d8, bishop b2, everything's hanging. And uh, he comes out up a whole bishop. Yeah, just up a bishop after that. So that knight c6 move just didn't work out. But white, I mean, white was just down material, didn't have any play. So look what Hammer did to himself, man, with queen e3. Oh, I mean, yeah, white, here. white could have oh even played queen c2 right away without the pawn on e5 hanging, gotta right? Are you kidding me? Is anyone in his chat right now, can anybody say, what is he doing? What did he say after this? This got to be, oh, he has lost this game. I mean, well, d3 is probably a good way to try and bail out. And I mean, try the hard way because d3 runs into what maybe rook takes d3 rook takes. yeah you just take it and he can't attack that rook with his queen so he doesn't get the tactic he needs oh he gets to check though no he gets to check that's why i played d3 oh to get yeah the check off. right rook so d3, d3 queen d4 and he could still win he could still be okay yeah but what about d3 bishop takes queen pawn takes queen hits the rook okay yeah mm -hmm. so what's gonna happen he just plays queen e5 instead easy as you like so let me just check one thing on d3 bishop takes queen pawn takes queen Bishop takes d8, pawn takes rook, rook takes. Maybe this is what Hammer didn't like. Like, he gets to this endgame. White's got d7 for the rook. The e-pawn's coming to e7. Maybe he's losing that equal material endgame, so he didn't play Especially d3. Especially with that bishop being passive in the 7th rank. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense, because I thought he could do that. All right. Well, queen e3 was, was, was abysmal, I got to say, just blocking oh, that bishop man. on d2. I mean, bishop yeah, e3. Yeah, he's just, just out of his element today. Sometimes, sometimes he's just off. It's out of his element. That today. said, this position is still close to equal, right? So it's like, how's he going to play this out now? Yeah, I think you would maybe have to do, like, maybe put the queen in the center of the board to start. Play b5 and bishop b6, mm -hmm. and then try to push and get the pawn. To yeah, d you'd like to play b5, bishop b6, then black would be in good shape once they're coordinated. But white can play rook f5, and then we lose the c5 pawn immediately. So we can't play b5 here. That's sort of like his problem. Right. Is he needs to get that bishop off of this horrible square it's horrible can you play b5 now maybe with the i was just pin? thinking that you might have to i mean yeah you got rook f oh he can't go rook f8 right yeah so b5 now just because b5 you got five now he could go queen f5 and get a queen trade and you would have to like you know trade it and then play bishop b6 but that feels like you still have a chance you still have a chance okay he went for it yep there he goes b5 26 seconds for minnesota blizzard here king g1 bishop b6 that should be automatic yeah, well, white and white play queen f5. His king is going to not be good if he's conceding both diagonals here. Mm -hmm. And now rook f8, maybe d3, and then c4. I'm going to say that Hammer won the game like three rolling. times if he wins this somehow because because white had their chances. White yeah. definitely had their chances. Right. Can he play d3 here? D3. D3. That's an interesting thing. Rook to takes look at. d5. Pawn takes queen. Rook to d2. C1 c4 check king move somewhere trade on b3 queen and then play bishop e3 um oh, yeah. i'll just show you guys what i'm saying i just was afraid i can't even move the the pieces fast enough um to show it check here here trade once here queen here bishop e3 and black gets a pawn up rook end game probably a draw so he just that keeps the tension awesome. for the moment yeah that's true just keeps the tension. too so what's funny is no, um, Hammer's getting close on time again. I mean, he was up. No, yeah. it's like, hey, man, you yeah. need to move. Is, is B5 not hanging? It actually is not because Queen C6 is lights out. Yeah. So definitely C4 is right. Man, White is so low on time here. Yeah, no, 12 seconds. To All right. D3. 30. D3 opening the bishop, right? Or I guess he could take on B3. Just eliminate all white's pawns. Then white doesn't really have any way to win the game. And then he's got three pawns and all that. Oh, no. He wants to play c3 too. He breaks oh, the man. blockade of d3 in advance because he's thinking of c3. And then d3. Whoa, where's the mate? Because he is going for one. This is this is desperation from white. There's no mate. There's no mate. Not with his king there. Hammer's always got resources with like queen e6 check, check and stuff. Yeah. Covering things he needs to. He could also play bishop d4 too if he needs These to. These pawns look kind of winning. Yep, we get two pawns winning. on the 7th right. round. Drop back to e6. It's a good square. Yeah, and you also threaten g6. Oh, man. Yeah. Queen e6. <laughs> He's got it. Hammer won this yeah. game for a third time, dude. C2. C2. Yep. D2. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, he could also queen and play queen h6 check and take it, so he's thinking about that too. And he decides to go for that. Oh, okay. Pick up the rook. Whoa, mate. No, that's not mate because queen h6 would have blocked it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Rook takes h7. On h6. And if rook h6 check, he's got queen h6. But this was... Now he's got to win with an extra piece. He could have done this more easily. Yeah. Three seconds. Two seconds. Three move. seconds. What you have the... Move, hammer. Oh, my goodness. He is really low on time. All right. He should not have gone for this. He should have just queened both pawns. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. The time scramble. He's just going to trade guys. queens. He's feeling confident that yeah. he can play a bullet game with queens off the board. He knows what he's doing. Come to the second rank. Start mm -hmm. collecting pawns. Yum. He loves those. Okay. something doesn't work he can just go back somewhere else there's not not going to be any surprises anymore no tactics nothing rook to c5 yeah, it's, just, it's just uh yeah there we go we have to we got a saw technique all technique gotta figure it out don't trade too many pawns man the one thing you can do wrong is trade pawns do not do not trade pawns have you ever made it with rook bishop versus rook Mm, not really me, me either not in a game maybe practice but like not classical or blitz yeah all right rook f4 is good enough here bishop can come back to b6 now oh there's yeah, a trap here with good. rook g7 oh my goodness he so you gotta go so rook good. check here and then over on the third rank to b3 that's correct man hammer's got technique in yeah, spades that's, man. that's technique right there that's good tech now he's got bishop e3 if he if he wants it. Doesn't even need it. Yeah, one pawn over there is enough. Check back. Come to e3. Thread mate. <laughs> that's bishop it. Five. Beautiful Did technique. It. And that's Did it. Did it. That's it. What? Uh, I'm so with good. checkmate. He won that ugly. That was uh oh, that was not the finest game that we've ever been presented with. I mean But he did give us an interesting game, so I mean we can't we can't complain. We wanted something complicated, right? Yeah. And then uh, you know when you get something complicated, you get some more mistakes. So that's how it goes. Why did he hang his ape on? Nobody knows. He's right. asking himself that question he right now. Yeah. He probably all right, asking the same question. It's like, why did I do that? Uh, I don't know. You guys tell me. I don't know. Say now I think he I... might be able to win without the bishop. The white king's just so far away. Yeah. But, so uh, glad to see Kathy have, have so many shows lately. Thanks, BJ, BJH. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, bro. He won ugly. Yeah, no. I randomly stumbled upon this. I know chess, but what do the timers mean? Are they watching replays? No, actually, this uh, is live. Welcome to you, Nappy Chicken. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the stream. And also, the timers are when when they move, it's time. So you don't have to sit here and play uh, or uh, a four hour game or a five hour game over online. Or they won't. You know, sometimes if somebody's losing, they may not move. So if you, you, you're playing with no time or something, you just never win a game. So it's good to have the timers. Yeah, with less than a minute, things get intense. You figure it out very quickly, man. You know, in the old days, like 140 years ago or something, there was this tournament. They didn't have clocks yet. And this guy, anytime he got a bad position, he would just sit there the whole day. He just wouldn't move. Yeah. Like, he would just stop. And there was nothing anybody could do about it. Correct. I There's guess there was the some kind of like gentleman's code, like other people would have like resigned or played it out or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this guy was, you know, whatever, the first guy who wanted to win at all costs. So <laughs> literally. So literally, if I have to sit here. So he just sat there all day yeah. and then eventually his opponents would just offer him a draw to end the game. I, draw. I just got to go home, man. I got to go home. You yeah. Draw. Yeah. So That's after that, they're like, we need, uh, we need chess clocks. And now, yeah, he was filibustering all his games. So yeah. then they invented the chess clock. Now we've got online chess clocks, and we play with like you know a minute or less on the clock instead of three hours or four hours. Man, that's the best ever. But uh, yeah, if you want to play, you can play. Anybody who wants to play, there's another match starting in 15 minutes, which all fans are welcome to join. Uh, we got we got the link here, and uh, you got to join. You got to join one of two fan clubs because coming up is the Minnesota Blizzard against the Con Blitz Stream. 
and uh, you have to join one of those two fan clubs. And then when you go into live chess and tournaments, you can find it or you can follow my link. And you can get in on that action. All right, the gnomes. The gnomes. Um, they got a point there in the end from, uh, from Hammer. He salvaged one point there. But uh, basically, they were the favorites before this group started. They've got the biggest fan club of anyone on uh, chess.com, I think, of any pro chess league team. Biggest fan club. So I guess also the weakest fans, right, James? I mean, if you got the numbers and you lose... Yeah, you got the number. Excuse me, you got the numbers and you lose. Like it's uh, it's tough. It's tough because you have the numbers, which means you have a lot of a lot of talent in there, a lot. And, and looking at the talent right now, speaking of, right now for both teams, Minnesota Blizzard has uh, one, two, three experts. Whoa, and the Blitz stream is stacked. Oh my goodness, they are stacked. I mean, number one, twenty one ninety nine. No way, two thousand, two thousand, twenty one hundred, twenty one hundred. <gasps> whoa oh well, that's like, scary yeah they're stacked right now so you guys should get over there and help out on the bottom halves maybe you can help out some of the bottom halves the <laughs> i mean because uh the top half right now is i mean you got the top 10 boards are all 2000 like for, for blitzstream yeah so they yeah, are just, they, they, they are forced to be reckoned with right now just glancing at this it's looking like the blizzard might need some help or whatever right <laughs> yeah. uh yeah i mean the blitzstream I think I predicted them to win today. Uh, if I remember correctly, that was my prediction. They lost their match last week by one point, but um, they still had a very strong showing. You know, they still put up like, you know, huge numbers of points in a record-setting match against the Chess Bras. So I figured their club was strong, and now I think, I mean, if those ratings are true, then we're seeing how strong they are right now, mm. with uh, with all these big guns coming out. Um. Yes, if you've joined, if you've joined the San Diego Surfers, you can join another club. In fact, I'm a member of all 16 clubs. So, well. but the thing is, if you join Minnesota and Con, then you won't be able to join the tournament. So, even if you're a fan of both teams, if you want to play in this match, you pick the team you want to play for today. You quit the other fan club, go into live chess, play the match, and then once the match is over, you can always go back and uh, join. And, and rejoin the the fan club, you know, and say like, hey, I'm a fan of you guys. I just like, you know, I just like con a little bit better. So, yeah. And um, I think uh, did, I think I had Blizzard to pick to win this one. Okay. Blizzard to win it. So um, yeah. Because uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm a fan of Tang and uh, and um, Bart John Bartholomew. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm actually you know root for those guys. So uh, Minnesota blizzard needs some definite help. I mean, I see yeah. the first 10 boards. That's 20 points right there. So yeah. if they win two, Oh, everyone, I love so. those guys, but I picked con and I'm looking forward to seeing them make like a right. comeback after last week. I mean, last week con scored zero points, right? So it was yeah. a bad, it was a bad week for them. They were at the bottom, but my feeling of how this division is going to shake out James is we're going to see chess bras first by quite a bit. They're going to run. They're going to run away with this thing. You're going to see, they're going to keep scoring next week too. But, Second, third, and fourth is going to be all clumped together, super close between mm. Khan and Minnesota and Norway. So mm. you're going to see three teams all clumped up together for that second spot in the Summer Series Championships and that third spot in the uh, Twitter poll vote. So, or Twitch, the, the poll's going to be on Twitch now, right? But uh, on August 17th, there'll be a poll. Which of the two third place teams people want to see? Um, which That's are the two right. third place teams people want to see in that summer series championships. That's right. So, you know, it's better to be third than fourth and it's going to be really close between those. So every point's going to be big, but I see Khan making a big comeback today. They got two points from Sebastian, making it past hammer into the finals in that knockout. If they can win their match, they'll get up to five points and they're in the thick of things then, you know, with, uh, with the blizzard and, and the gnomes. So it's big. They need it. And, uh, and I think they're going to get it. I think they're gonna get it. Yeah, I think um, I think they are. I think they are. Blitzstream right now, based off these numbers, they are going to win this match. I mean, even oh my goodness, yeah, it's really bad. It's just I just have to say it's really bad for for Blizzard because right. of the fact that like all here the comes way Hammer down to sixty. Oh, Hammer's coming in. Hammer's coming in. Oh, and all his fans. Hey, what's up, guys? Hammer time. Hammer time with the raid. 
what's up guys hi kenzie hi chat what's hammer up, we were harsh on you today yeah you're, you're my friend so i know you can take it and uh you know sorry about it but that's how it went today last week was just a highlight reel and we loved it and uh this week was uh was tougher but good job pulling out that last that last win we were just talking how second through fourth place is going to be super close in this league so so even that one point for the gnomes they might they might need that to get to nudge ahead of Khan or the blizzard at the end of the standings in this group yes yes i mean uh, honestly even blitz even uh the blizzard right now have uh they even don't they don't have enough not enough players but I mean, I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling past Blizzard's. This is probably maybe board. I don't know, 25, right? Maybe, and I'm still scrolling. It's like con, con, con. They got con, they con, got 50 they people are. here waiting for a game. So they're like, bring it on, <laughs> bring it on. Yeah, yeah. Get more help. Yeah. Get more friends. Yeah. We're ready to play. Man, it's or do some play. I don't see. <laughs> let's go. I don't see. Yeah, actually, the lowest. Let's see, down at 1600. He's playing a 900. So their lowest is about 16, and it's, it's really unfair, guys. So if you are a fan of the Minnesota <laughs> Blizzard, please go over there and make it fair, okay? We need some strength, or they need some strength over there. So please Make chess them. fair again. Make chess fair again, right. One, <laughs> two, three, four. There's four now. Four over 2,000 for the Blizzard. But there is a huge gap, huge gap. And if you want this to be any kind of fight, fans, you got to yeah. go help at the yeah. Blizzard. And if you're a fan of of uh, of Khan or the French or of the Blitzstream, like you know, just get in there and make it a one sided massacre. You know, that's that's cool too. Some people like that. Yeah. Where to join, Kansi? It's uh, it's someone put the link in the chat for the joining. Go join a Minnesota Blizzard fan club. And help them out, please. Help them out. Yeah. Let's make it fair, guys. Some people also also asking about the schedule, how they can watch the GCT. I'm insulted that you guys aren't here for us, but I'm gonna help you out anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna help you out anyway. The GCT is gonna be in about half an hour, so so stick around. We'll watch the first. You know, you can see the the beginning of this match, and then uh, GCT will be on in about half an hour. Um, it might be over on the Chesscom Events channel. Um, although Chess is saying there will be no programming on Chesscom Events today, so I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen with that, but just hang out for half an hour, watch the start of this match, and I'm sure somebody in chat. We'll tell you where to go to watch the it will GCT. It'll be on this channel only. Says chess.com. Cool. Be on this channel only. All right. So they're committed to kicking us off, no matter where this match is going. I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get this started then. Let's get this started, right? Mm-hmm. We got to get this match started. Six and a half minutes. And, and the GCT is breathing down our neck. The fan club matches are 10 minutes and 2 seconds. So, um, yeah. So who's in the chat? GMs in the DMs. That's funny. That's a great name. GMs in the DMs. That's great. Thank you for your chess streamers teaching, commentating, and understanding of chess and how to advance in the chat. You're greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you, Grand Knight. Appreciate it. Hess and Botez doing commentary next. That's going to be great. Shout out to Chess Bay. Hello, Chess Bay. Hello, hello. Yeah, so here you can see two rounds of 10 and 2. It means you play against the same person twice, once with white and once with black. At least that part's fair, right? You get two games in. You don't get uh, you don't get like in the knockout where you just have to play black. Like Hammer had to play black all day today, right? That's that's not fun for for anyone to always give up that advantage. But you guys don't have to do that. The fans always get one game with white, one game black. Ten minutes, two second increment goes on your rapid rating in chess chess dot com. Yep, rapid rating. Which rapid is? Um, I mean, it's ten two. It's uh, it's ten two usually, um, but. It's not really, it is rapid, but it's also very fast, guys. It's very fast. 10 minutes goes by so quick. So yeah. make sure that you are paying attention. And that's just advice wise. Pay attention to your time. Don't treat it like a um, like a slow game because it's not really a slow game, but that's how it is. So anyone else get a choppy stream? Not anymore. Not anymore. All right. Real Dogamon has joined the Blizzard as you asked him to. Okay, is this 
Wait, we start in how many minutes? Five minutes. Cool. Five minutes. Five minutes left till they go. Per of sir, thanks for joining. Our Vega has joined on Blizzard, Blizz, uh, um, the Blizzard fan club. I'm just looking through to see if it's at least a little bit even. Oh my goodness! Like even the lower boards is pretty tough. I mean, six, when you start at 1600, it like everyone else is 15, 14, 17, and it's like really tough. I mean, it's really tough for the Blizzard guys. It's yeah. Really tough. All right, so looking at the tournament, yeah, somebody's somebody's gonna post a link in the chat. Looking over at our predictions, you predicted the knockout battle correctly. You got the chess bras, Robin Van Campen. He was in dominant form today. I mean, he was never in trouble in the knockout. He scored one and a half out of two in the club match against uh, Hammer, which is like fantastic. Draw with black, win with white. Um, so big day for him. He scored, and also. The chess bras that way scored six points. So they're the fourth team in summer summer series to score a full six point week. Now we've got this group D match where we predict Khan for me and Blizzard for you. Um looking ahead to the brackets, our brackets are gonna have to change a little bit because uh we were each thinking that the chess bras or yeah. let's see, what did you think on the chess bras? You predicted the chess bras to finish first place in this division, so you were right, man. Absolutely, the chess bras are gonna win that one. You were right. Man. So your 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 bracket doesn't need any changes. You got the chess bras here as the top seed from Division D. Although they'll probably have more fans than the bottom bottom snowballs, so they'll probably be like the second or third seed. Mm -hmm. And but but mine is what needs real work because. The gnomes are not even like clear to get into the championship at this point. Looking pretty tough today, and the chess yeah. bras are definitely going to get that top seed. I I can feel it after today. Eleven out of twelve points so far in the standings. Man, yeah, they can almost almost not even just drop a, a point. You know, like it's they got more points than Group C. Group C top performers were ten. You know, yeah. This is uh, still a full week of chess left. Yeah, they are looking in fantastic shape um so we'll see who they send next week you know as their representative hopefully another strong gm hopefully they don't just like coast and let their little brother play for fun yeah tc schmidt says i hope those ratings from the bliss streams are wrong <laughs> <laughs> man yeah i wish we wish the same right open oh, that's man. not like, real one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten players over two thousand they've got ten players over two thousand that's like Moscow levels. That's like wizard levels. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see the wizards come in here and play against Khan in place oh, of Minnesota against this lineup, see what that would look like. This is the strongest lineup I've seen in a while. I mean, three players, all basically 2,200. Or I'll, I'll say the top one, two, three, four, five. Yep. Top five boards, basically 2,200. Yeah. Hidden Nordic. Hidden Nordic. The gnomes needed you, Hidden Nordic. Now you're playing for Khan. Maybe he's a Nordic hiding in France. <laughs> All right. And if you right, wanted to play a, in the match, there's a minute left to figure out how to do it. Yep. Minute and 20. Uh, I mean, I would say if Minnesota wins this, they're in they're in good shape. Because last week they were in um they were in second place with four points. So if they uh if they win this They'd be up to seven points. They'd clearly be in second place. But on the other hand, if Khan wins it, they'll move up into second place with five points. They won't have that same margin, but they'll basically be there. Yeah, 50 seconds to go, guys. 50 seconds to go, and this is going to be, I mean, it's about to get wild. Hopefully, we see yeah. a lot of upsets to see if the Blizzard can hang with the, the Blitz stream today because that is definitely the question of the hour. Look at this lineup. It's like, oh, my goodness. I hope that they go easy on them. So let's see what happens. It's 30 seconds left. You guys still have 30 seconds to get in. Hurry up. Playing for the Blizzard or the Blitzstream. Preferably the Blizzard because they don't need any more players on the Blitzstream. So we do need to get it going. Two games, 17 seconds. It's about to start. All right, I'm trying to get the trying to get the the live standings here for everybody, but something's going wrong. Let's 
Oh, that's what's wrong. I got it. As we're talking about the standings, might as well pull up the accurate standings here. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. What is this opening? Ponziani or something. Yeah, Blizzard and um Blizzard and Blitzstream have kicked off. Who's playing again for There we go. Renato, okay. And Sebastian. Thirty-five and a half points clinches the match. Cool. Good to know. Thirty-five and a half clinches the match. So Let's see. I don't know how this weirdness is going on. Bishop to e2. Bishop g4. That's strong. You might be casting right into an attack if you're not careful here. And if he doesn't castle, he'll also possibly come under attack on the e-file. Right. Yeah. So what do you do about that move? I think that was strong, man. Bishop g4 was good. How do you counter that? F3 is not a move you really want to make, and that's what he did. <laughs> but Oof. It's ugly. There's some there's some problems there. It's not a move. Can you play knight takes e4 here? <laughs> Whoa, I mean, see that's that's already like, you know, something's wrong when they start calculating that kind of moves in your position, you know? Knight takes e4, we went wrong somewhere. So, let's maybe queen to c2 now. Queen is has done enough damage. It's time to go home. Queen c2 and then where is the king yeah. going to go? Queen's definitely Coming to C2 here. Nope, something else. Well, this gives Black the chance to play C5, and then when the queen moves, C4. Mm -hmm. Try and crack things. Yikes. Yeah, the king is in the center, and at all costs, you want to keep the king in the center. So C5, yep, queen C2, C4. And then if you take, we, we take on E4, and we just bust open white's position before you start castling. There it is. That's right. David is correct. Yeah. And C4. Is on the board. This could be bad already. D4. That's a nice move, actually. Pawns look pretty nice. Oh, Black okay. does not want to allow E5. So, okay. Got to do something. Got to do something. Take, take Bishop C6, maybe. Maybe trade once and then go to G4 with somebody. The Back Bishop or the Knight. Bishop. Yeah, he did that before, too. Mm. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense to trade and come to e4 with someone. This is going to be intense. I got to ask you before, I mean, before I wanted to ask before it gets too intense, but it's already too intense. But I mean, having watched these two players for the first time in the knockout, right, with so little data, so little data <laughs> on Renato Terry playing white here and Sebastian Joie playing black, which of them do you favor in, in their top board match here of two games? Like who looked better to you in the knockout? That's a good question. Man, that's a great question. I think, honestly, I'm going to have to go with Renato. 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 Yeah, I think for some reason I just looked in. And also, Fide Rise, uh, what is um, Blitzstream's, I mean, not Blitzstream, um, Sebastian's Sebastian's Fide, rate. You know? I think 2430 24, Fide, yeah. something like that. I, and I know when you said, you know, 25, I didn't know what uh, his, his rating was. I didn't yeah. know what uh, Renato's rating was. And, you, yeah. you know, like 2500. Fide, and it's already you know difficult getting a 2400 international master. So once you get to 2500, yeah. which is GM minimum, you you are there. So I do have a I have a, a feeling he's just going to be stronger. Yeah. But in this that position said, right now, like he getting he about to get the work put on. Yeah, him right. Yeah, now. Sebastian <laughs> State came apart this first game. <laughs> oh my goodness, he putting the work on him right now, guys. Like I said, when you put a king in the center, you got to make sure you keep that king in the center at all costs and it looks like black guess, is doing a great job of i guess he can castle at least right so he can do some kind of survival with bishop f3 bishop e4 bishop e4 f5 and then just castle get out he of just, there give back the like, piece you, know what? you can have it bro i'm cool i'm sorry i offended you like you can have it back you can have it right back oh he just gives it back without the bishop trade huh <laughs> Yeah, he just didn't want no problems. Well, that's surprising because that bishop seems pretty well placed at the moment. I would have thought you'd want to trade your e2 bishop for that. 
Is he so ambitious? Song, he thinks yeah. he's going to play bishop c4 and bishop f7, scot free, and black's not going to mess him up meanwhile? Mm -hmm. Because uh, black is going to mess him up. <laughs> white pieces, Renato Terry. International master Renato Terry is playing with the white pieces. Bishop takes c4 is, is coming. 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 6. So it's even. Steven, that yeah. bishop is a monster, though, on e4. Yeah. So, so let's play, like, to... queen d7. Bishop c4. Ooh, you got f7. Queen h3. Hello. Hello. Yeah, how you doing? Left the front door. Right. Open. Take f7 That's if you like. Sure. King h8. Now you got to deal with mate. Man, you can play you queen e2 everybody. or rook f2, but whatever you do, we play bishop takes g3. Yeah, whatever. You just kind of take whatever. it apart. Yeah. You got to go, like, bishop f3. Bishop f3, get rid of it, and go bishop f4. You have to start trading. And then this that's tough oh, to be in a situation like that. Maybe bishop f4 now, though. What was wrong with queen d7 and just, just going for him? Yeah, I would have played queen d7. I'm a queen d7 fan myself. All right, c6 is what he's planning. I mean, I saw this option, too. I thought, like, if you're really worried about c4, you can go to d5. They're going to oppose you, and you play c6, and you sort of even out those pawns. But now it's like a second lease on life for Renato Terry. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's exactly how it is. It's almost like he didn't have a bad opening. Right. It was like it was a great opening. Started well, guys. So this is, yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't have to play f three. I didn't get sacked on e four again. <laughs> I'm fine. This was a simple theory. No, it's not. Hi, gang. What's up, Quinn? What's going on? Gotcha. Thanks, James. You should get extra points for beautiful games. You should. You should. Renato Terry's got white here for the Minnesota Blizzards. Renato so Terry. Sacked. Three? I mean, this pawn is straight up hanging. And is hanging. I don't know if this is shocking or if it's the or if it's the last time we're going to see this, but the Minnesota Blizzard have an early two to one lead. Right, two to one, guys. Two to one. Let's so. go. Even though the blitz stream is stacked right now, yeah, we will see what happens very momentarily. We got Jared J M who scored an early point against Wafu Crazy King. Nice. Crazy King should have maybe been a little less crazy, but there we go. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Maybe I mean matches have surprised us before. You know, Minnesota have the lead. Maybe they're gonna gonna keep it and grow it. We'll see what happens out of this one. Yeah, he did get an upset there. Jared got an upset over to fifteen hundred. But okay, this plan with Bishop D five and C six it seems to have lost a pawn anyway really quickly. Mm -hmm. And only thing I think he has is rookie two. Rookie That's two. Well, actually, rookie two is hanging. And the then rook. there's eight, right? Yeah, you're just hanging. So he'd like to. He'd like he, to do that. <laughs> right. Of course, he would love to play rookie two and then, you know, double up. But what do you do? Rook d8 first? Uh, Probably rook d8 first. Eight. And then it's going to be queen g2 is going to have to come back. It stops. Bishop takes g3. Mm -hmm. And it stops rookie two. And then black's got his work cut out for him. <laughs> yeah, he's just down a clear down pawn, a pawn in the and... game. He's down a clear pawn. Uh, Sack on g3 like a man. <laughs> Sack on g3. You can do that, but that's just jumping off the deep end. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's not a move, big fella. After takes, takes, then you go back to G2 with the queen. And then you just trade. You get two pawns for the piece. Like, it's not enough. You usually want to get yeah. three for the piece. Um, so yeah. it's even, but it's not. And the fact that he was already down a pawn means he only has one pawn oh, yeah, for it at exactly. the moment. Correct. So, it's, yeah. uh, so you didn't gain anything. One pawn. That's so not now happening. It's three to two. But three I appreciate three. William William's uh, love of sacrifice. I mean, he was... He That's was right. a he was a fan of and a proponent of that game of the day that we saw with the oh yeah with the rook sack <laughs> yeah that was a big boy game and yeah, uh, yeah rook d eight played rook we're gonna see queen g two and uh, I don't know Sebastian is probably kicking himself about about missing this queen f three move because I think when he went yeah. bishop d five and c six he missed uh, he missed queen f three yeah because now Weiss in the driver's seat he's up a clear pawn this could be just devastating. see what happens yeah well the blizzard are up three two now so they're still there um got some interesting club match chat for anybody in the tournament <laughs> someone's match. gonna get blacklisted so that chat's not totally pc there hmm oh yeah the craziness over here um all right so he's thinking a long time on queen g2 i don't know that there's any other move it seems pretty obvious right, what's yeah. what's the queen issue two and maybe he's looking at queen f3 too but what's queen g2 up? i like because it just controls the the second rank and you can play bishop f4 and not worry about when like if you go queen f3 and bishop yep. f4 after taking on f4 you do have to worry about e2 
Right. Uh, so actually, your queen now. doesn't help you on the F file. Correct. Correct. So G2 is just more accurate. All right. Having a big think about it. I guess, you know, you got to think about something. So he decided to stop and have a look here. Got to be pretty happy with himself. Queen G2, H5 could be played. I mean, we definitely have to look for creative stuff for black because their position's tough. So on Queen G2, H5, H4, that's a logical idea. I think white would play bishop f4 for sure. <clears throat> they want to trade that bishop and, you know, get their other get their other rook out on, uh, on A1. And H4 shouldn't hurt too bad. I think white will be able to still have enough pawns in front of his king. So queen g2, I might also look at trying to play rook e2 for black. So like rook e6, bishop f4, and then rook d to e8. That'd be another way to go. And, um, and he chose f3, actually. He what? chose f3. He chose f3. Yeah, he chose f3. I think queen g2 is slightly better, but queen f3 is a thing. He did go there. Now rook e6, he's trying to double up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what black's going to do. They're just going to play rook d e8, make sure white doesn't get rook a d e1. And they're just going to hang tough. They're down a pawn. They're down a pawn. But just try to hang tough, not give up anything too easy. Yeah, he's actually going for that line now. Bishop takes that four queen. If you do trade, if you happen, tra happen to trade, trade queens and everything, you can always go back f2 is what he's saying. Just, you know, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm uh, you get the seventh rank, but I get to, I'm okay, basically. Right. Okay. Come here. If yeah. rooks trade and rook to b8, he'll have to play yeah. the passive move rook b1, but it'll hold long yeah. enough for his king to get in on things. Or even rook f1. Or, or you mean rook b1 after this line. Yeah, rook b8, rook b1. Right. Right. Yeah. That's correct. So, oh, the Blizzard take... keeping this one point lead. Maybe this is going to be a super tight that. match. Five to four. Man. Oh, man. Finally get the Dark Bishop out. What's up, Wayne Bean? What's up, bro? Hope you're doing well, yo. Hope you're doing well, man. Yeah, I got the bishop out, got it traded off right away. This is uh, comfortable. Yep, comfortable. For the blizzard. Rook to F2. And now he moves out of the way. Rook to B1. Ah, uh, two one sets of rooks first. on the board. I see. Trying to stay more active. Mm -hmm. More pressure with those rooks. He can play rook A6 at some point, and then when white plays A3, then there's just no talk of B3 ever. Um. So white's going to try and win the game by moving the king to C1. That's the winning plan. Ah, uh, yes. You just slide Can't all just... the way across. So nice, right? Yeah. What do you Wait. even do for, for black? The Blizzard just scored two more points. They've extended the lead to eight oh, to five. What's going eight on? Wow. The Blizzard are, they like, you know what? We might be undermatched or underrated, but not right now. Everybody's just coming wow. over here to hang out. It's looking good. You guys are looking real good. It's eight to six. Yeah. Eight There's... to six. You're fighting. Yeah. And that's what matters. They're fighting. Bonkers. Bonkers 918 won two games already. That's pretty fast, man. That's pretty fast. Yeah, I've seen that actually down here. Pretty yeah. Fast. Now eight oh. to seven. Man, I can't believe it. We're gonna have a tight match and we're not gonna get to see the conclusion. That's like robbed. I mean, it's it's really <laughs> exciting when these matches go down to like a one point match, like uh yeah. or even a tied match. Yeah. Adi Buzz, high chess. Hey, how are you? Is Penguin playing? Penguin is not uh, with his Penguin friends in the Glacier today. No. Yeah. This That's is cool. Renato Terry making his debut for the Blizzard. And uh, hasn't scored any points yet, so they're waiting. They're waiting for him to make his big appearance. That's right. Uh, I, feel like, uh, I feel like White's going to win this endgame. I know a lot of Rook endgames, you know, have this, like, reputation of being drawn. But my instinct is that white's going to win this eventually. I think white's crushing, honestly, because of the plan. Because king c1, king c2, you can play b3 and create a pass pawn. You actually have two of them. So right. it's, like, uh, it's just completely winning. He king can C2 cover this weakness on b2 with the king. He's got a protected pass pawn on d4, and he's got the idea of like rook f5 to c5 eventually once he gets nice. once he gets his king into position and frees up one of his rooks to not need to defend b2. Then Black's got, you know, isolated pawns on a7 and c4 as sort of like an extra problem. Mm -hmm. And rook f5 is just going to get active. Yeah, we straight up just up material. And this is an in-game that you can convert just by creating a pass pawn. Yeah. Well, you know, the pair of rooks off just to help out. Maybe he's got to play rook e6. 
so that when one rook trades, at least white's other rook can't get active because of rookie two. And then oh, white would switch strong. to the plan you mentioned with b3 and c4. Yeah, rookie six is really good, actually. That's a really strategic plan. I think white could take the pawn in h4 here. I know you can often just throw away a pawn like that, but while you're recovering it, white's going to do something on the queen side. So if I were white, I, I wouldn't that. mind taking that. Yeah, because it's extra material. It's a second pawn, and honestly, what, yeah, what, like you said, while you're recovering that, I'm fine. I'll just keep doing operations. Also, black creating a pass pawn on this side, on the king side, is very unrealistic. Um, unless he gets the h pawn, but that's going to take a while. By the time I, that happens, I got the d and the c pawn, you know, rolling and and queening both of them yeah that said there's no need to take on h4 it's just i would do it i wouldn't i wouldn't you know often you see a pawn in h4 and you're like oh yeah if you take it it's no good but here there's no real reason you couldn't yeah um the riskier approach would be g4 just because it's more complicated you can play g4 and say hey that h pawn is going to be another weakness for me to attack um that's but, actually what happened to it. He actually captured it. But he just took it, yeah. And this match is still close. 11-9. to Two-point lead for the Blizzard. The uh, Blitzstream has started scoring a couple points on the top boards. But uh, there's some big upsets for, for the Blizzard down on the lower boards. You know, where like, you know, a 1,200 or 1,400 rating or fifteen or 1,600 doesn't make as big a difference, right? So, mm -hmm. All right. Here's Operation. Make a bunch of pass pawns. B3 is in. And, there, uh, it is. there it is. He finally got that. Yeah, that B three in. Looking good. What? He took with the king. I mean, I don't understand either. I have no idea why he took with the king. I'm that's baffled. that's some new technique for me. Totally baffled. <laughs> I've never totally seen that like, before. Okay. All right, he did take with the king to get the king closer. I guess yeah. he's gonna just yeah trade the rooks now and then. Just bringing up his king into a really yeah, active king. position. He was more okay. focused on that king activity than the perfect, you know, picture perfect yeah. pawn structure. Correct. Correct. Um, Very strong. Very strong. I guess it's. I guess it's a good technique. I mean, I don't think it would have been bad to take with the a pawn either. Yeah. But uh, this is certainly logical. I mean, two connected pass pawns is enough. You don't really need the a pawn to help them, and the king's in good position now. So. Yeah. Also, yeah. The rook is still holding nice. the f file. Yeah, it's very nice. It's just it's a, a nice clear technique. win here. Clear win. I would have never even looked at that move, honestly. I mean, just never. Just never seen it. F5. So he's giving up just to take. I yeah, he wants to take that. on H2, get to A2, you know, just, just mix things up. Um, I would expect pawn to D5 here. Just, I consider the going. same. D5 just seems correct. Because even if black gets the pawn to F4, it's not yet moving anywhere from there. And then uh, white's here. always got to move rook g2 if the black king comes over to defend, right? Like, say you go d5, f4, c4, king d7, and then you just play rook g2 for white. Well, uh, that's, that's tough for black to defend, right? Yeah, everything. Yeah, he's winning everything. Because, yeah, you're right. In that situation, too, these pawns are going to get too strong, and it's just going to be snap. You're going to snag everything. The rook defend is, with uh, rook h7. White always has rook to g4. Yeah. And then... You know, just just convert these. Like we're gonna let Black take H two at some point, but every move forward we can make with these C and D pawns before we sack H two just means we're closer to queening them when Black starts trying to get their counterplay, and uh, you know you don't want it to be too much of a race. Mm -hmm. He's also uh, he's getting low on time, but he's trying to figure. I guess he just calculated it. There he goes. He he pushed it anyway. He's just calculating. Is this a win? Which it is. I mean, it's just like where where is the correct win? What's the fastest way to do this? Most accurate, less counterplay. Yeah, and finally he chose d five. The same yep. the same idea that we had in mind for now. How's the match? Thirteen point five all. Absolutely dead tied. Um, I'm gonna open up another game just just out of curiosity. See what else is going on. Whoa! Nice time to tune in. Seb the best against Anthony Atanasov. And Seb has sacked a rook, man. Man, did he do that? Oh, no. Actually, you know what's funny? Anthony began sacked on. Yeah. Like, for some reason, <laughs> Anthony's having a bad day. <laughs> yeah, he got sacked on two times with a rook and something else. He could have been winning. His opponents are angry. Maybe he'll win this one. I'm not sure that I see what White is up to, other than collecting say, a ton of pawns. I'm about to say, hey, it, don't, it doesn't look... Clear. I mean, it looks like honestly, it's losing after Queen takes e6. Mm -hmm. 
then it's yeah. just queen f7. So you may have to try rook h3 because it looks good. That's really all you can try. Okay. Other than that, it's yeah, nothing yeah. else to do. Right, that um, might be worth trying. Actually, but even then, it's like, what's yeah, your threat yeah. after rook h3? Not really actually, any rook threat. H, yeah, it's not. And he couldn't play rook h3. Queen g2 is mate, so that's like nothing. Queen e6 was forced. Wow! What? No! No, man, no! No, no, no! Is it mate? Rook check, rook h7, queen f6, queen g7, no mate. Oh. Okay, so there's no mate, but this was the wrong feel. Oh, man, yeah, he jumped right off the defense there. Do not do that again. Maybe queen f6 and just hold. Queen f6 and just sit there. But he still, he still can play queen f7. There's a lot, it's going to be some shuffling, I would say that. It's going to be a lot of shuffle back and forth. It's also seven seconds for Anthony. Very crazy game. Yeah, so what does he want to do here? Something to like try and trap the knight, you know, something like rook takes g7, queen g7, queen d5. That's like the that's like the hope for white here. Mm. Something like that. Does that even work? I mean, what does black do after that? Nope, he went for something else. Just praying on the clock. Just praying. Oh, shoot, we missed the end of that game. No. Oh, it's over. The... My bad. What happened? Well, he won. he won. He won that rook end game. Won. Okay. Those are All right. I got distracted by the rook sack. That's that's how my mind works, though. I see a rook <laughs> yeah. sack. And... Yeah, rook sack, you've got to stop and look like it's a rook sack. Yeah. Eight seconds. Man, I think I think white had a chance there, right, to trade and play queen d5. And if you collect that knight, then white's going to win the game. It's going to be enough. But okay. Next game, we got us a fantastic opening. I don't know this one at all. So always fun to see something new. English opening with a quick f5 from Renato Terry. Normally, I would like answer f5 with d4 immediately, but he plays g3, g6 right. first, and then he goes for the same kind of thing that I was thinking of. Yeah, I, hated, I actually hated playing against the English for a while, and I didn't. I didn't have anything good against it. I would always play because, of course, it's like the reverse Sicilian. So playing the e5 in there. When I would play e5, I'm like, I don't like this ex this Sicilian that they get. Mm -hmm. And it's also, uh, I'm down a tempo. So I wasn't a fan of that. Still not a big fan of it. But I do see, you know, Super GMs playing e5. So I might actually go back to it eventually. Then yeah. I played the uh, the symmetrical English for a long time. But I'm like, this me, tactical Tau, basically kind of player. I love Tau games. Playing yeah. a symmetrical, boring English with no tactics. I'm like, yeah. just killing myself in the game. It's yeah. Like, it's kind of terrible. So I'm like, what else do I play? So now I play the Kings Indian defense, but I found some lines to it where I can just play the Kings Indian defense against everything, basically. So yep. I used to play the Anglo uh, Dutch too, or Anglo English, which is the F5. So this is what this reminds me of. Yeah. Is the, Ang is the Anglo stuff. I don't know. I'm not a huge, big, like, I don't know the theory on it, but I do know. I was okay. It was okay to play it. I just was looking for something other than the English, like what to play against it. What do you play against the English? Uh, everything. <laughs> same as against other first moves for white i play everything uh everything yeah i mean i'll play i'll play the i'll play 1e5 i'll play symmetrical i'll play whatever queen's queen pawn defense i want to anyway you know c4 yeah. you can play c6 and d5 play the slob you can play e6 right. d5 play the queen's gambit declined you play everything it's like man today's yeah. friday uh i'm gonna play this one today yeah let's do that so this opening here queens are off the board you might you might yawn once or twice. Oh, absolutely. But, but um, in terms of like who has a good position or whatnot, I would expect that White has a small advantage because the Black Kings in the center is going to cost him a little time. But he should be able to play B6, King C8, King B7 if he wants to, just like in a Berlin, another another opening that produces some yawns. Yeah, correct. All right, he chooses another totally approach. Fine. Black is like totally fine. You know, knight f6, king f7. Yeah, it's very comfortable. No problems. Very comfortable. Yeah, and he's doing okay here. And actually, so pretty close to a draw. Our rook yeah, sack game absolutely. ended in a draw by stalemate. Anthony Atanasov successfully defended everything with five seconds on the clock. Mm -hmm. Comes down the board and stalemate in a winning position. Oh man, <laughs> knight c3, knight e2 would probably be the cleanest, the cleanest way. Oh. And that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. And how's the match going? 23 and a half, 23 and oh, a half. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Those blizzard are uh those blizzard are showing up. What's your feed rating, David and James? Minus 22, 21.
my fee day is like I don't know somewhere in the twenty three hundreds. When I was when I was active, it was twenty four hundred. Nice. Obviously, that's the only way to get the IM title. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. All right, cool. So, unfortunately, we're about to get bumped by some 27, 2800 players. So, we're going to have to leave this thrilling match. 24 25, big question mark. Nobody knows which of these teams is going to take second place in Division D. If for some reason you'd rather follow them than the 2700s that are incoming, then, you know, cool on you. I mean, I love. Give me the fans their credit. Here are some links to follow the tournament so you can keep track of those um, of those games and those matches. But uh, James and I are going to have to bail now, so we're going to run. See you later, guys. See you on the next one. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week, I think, at the normal 9 a.m. time for the third week of Division D to, to find out who makes it into the championships. Absolutely. And uh, looking All forward right, guys, to that. Enjoy enjoy your time here with the uh, GCT. Make sure you learn something nice. I'm actually going to leave my link to my stream so you guys can follow me and also David as well. So thank you guys so much, man. Enjoy, this, enjoy the rest of your day in the stream.